104.9 XFM. Uh, you all right? This is Carl, uh, producer of uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant. They're not about today. Ricky's on holiday. Uh, Steve couldn't be bothered. So um, I'm left here with all the dats. Uh, that's a digital audio tape uh, of all the uh, of all the shows they've done since they've been here over the last I don't know year and a half or something. So uh, we'll play you uh, some of the best bits. All right. So uh, here's the first bit. I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me. I, was, I don't know what I was doing, I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably. And he just looked at me, I don't know, he was looking at me. And I looked back and he went, have you ever used a Y front properly? Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely Has, no. Uh, does anyone use their Y front properly? And by that I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided. As yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Y front properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I, caught, I caught you, really. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. You get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, it's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't prove I was gay. I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. I thought it was the old gay lord say no thing. That is another method. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how... Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gaylord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, that is well... True. It originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. It's yeah. a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening who's... and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie, wouldn't they, I suppose? Yeah. I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No? Usually. I sort of just sort of, sort of pull my boyfriend, uh, my sort of tracksuit. Yeah. That's why I wear sort of like elasticated waist yeah. pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort Speed. of like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got to get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah, we and out. Sure, sure. Often I won't shake. No, well, no. To my detriment, because it <laughs> often leaks out a little bit later, oh. doesn't it? Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish I hadn't and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell or see it. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I have for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Never well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know how, when my parents bought this book. I assume it's from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's quite long, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are... Generally, the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like kind of just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or, that this is probably... Or crucial. up in Greg's The Bakers that Carl <laughs> exactly. gets most of his facts from. Uh, the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, fascinated. Brilliant. That's fantastic. But what, what, what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's, ge it's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboons serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. So it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. <laughs> one of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's, it's, not, no, it's, not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon baboons would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just not leaving enough and just legging it. Exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so Terrence Conrad or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri because it comes half eaten. They can't <laughs> help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with, like, you know... Beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bit. I go. Do you? Want Can and you imagine that? The baboons serving at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. That's See, a good zoos fact. would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. You could go. If they were serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, exactly. one child. Okay, go through there. 
I okay. think they should do other things, like in you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of thing. pelican. Yeah, yeah. Just, we start doing that again <laughs> because that's, that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> that they did. Was, that was how they it, did it. Definitely. Right? Yeah. Just, just uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was. Do you know them two gay American men who have have tigers? Okay, the two gay ones, oh, yeah. Go two on. possibly gay guys. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Or, yeah, if you on. shave a tiger's head... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Right, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head... Not just its head, its whole body. If Oh, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry yeah. So I thought, you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on, then, go yeah. On. If you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. The yeah. skin. The skin's Is stripy. it like rock? <laughs> it goes all, it the, like way all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Where did you hear that one? That's I remembered that. Like, I was was that a drunk just shouting it in the street? <laughs> <laughs> I shaved a tiger and it's still striving. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a polar bear? Polar bear's um, skin is actually um, black and its fur is transparent, not white, and it gives the illusion. So it uh, gets all the radiation possible from the sun, but it's still camouflaged. I didn't understand that, Rick. Sorry, you lost me. If a, its skin's black, a polar bear's skin is black, and its fur is translucent, and its fur is translucent. So why is it white when we? Well, it's it just because the the light hits it and the sun reflects on it. Yeah, and it makes it look white. Yeah, so if you look at each individual hair, it's actually translucent. So at night, hair. it would be black. <laughs> well, everything is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, not bright stuff, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> You've embarrassed yourself. Play a record. XFM 104.9. Lovely that one. Now. Again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him. And uh, we were chatting and having a, having a cup of tea. And it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes, was The Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that, that twist came in, he'd go, gee, I can't... Yeah. Oh, God. I can't believe so it was the tree that did it. <laughs> and I mean, he was probably the only... And, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story. Um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across in the radio, but I told him this story. Um, it, was a, it was a short. It was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash. You see, it's a horrendous wreck. And you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car. And he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave... And he sort of he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown. He goes, "Oh no, Dave, Dave!" And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black, and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow! Right? Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end um, uh, at the uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution. Um, people experienced consciousness for you know, and he went, he went, oh. No, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> Imagine remaking that film, but it's two chickens in horrendous car crash. <laughs> Their would... own fault for driving. <laughs> <laughs> it would work. No, no, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? Went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly was something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, he's annoyed, yeah. Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And uh, he says, I can get you out of it. So what you've got to do, right? You've got to, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, well, when you hear the bell toll, yeah, that means there's a, been a, yeah, a uh, dead body. Yeah, yeah, there's been a dead body. So what you've got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the, get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape. Yeah. Right. So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you, right. And then I'll come, I'll come back later and dig you up. Right. Yeah, but that's that, the point. That doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. It right, really matters. Okay. Listen, I, I right. don't know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back, and she has to get no, buried alone. Be better than yeah. that. So she gets in the coffin, and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's she, buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on, so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere. So she's thinking, this is it. I'm getting out. And uh, 
Yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking, why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd he'd help escape. Oh. How bad is that? That is... <laughs> how bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she's buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just, like, lying in the morgue and going, actually, I'm getting out of here. Yeah. This isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having told yeah. that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is Have that, you seen any? Is that your favourite horror thing ever? What was that one you told me about with the, uh with the porn. That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this... Uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, this, is, now, this is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one um, on Tales and Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor or something like that, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some um, erotic uh, um, stuff from us um, before he died and he owes a uh, uh, hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing. They just didn't want to say, just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes around there and he goes around and uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did it, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> now think about it, Steve, is that so stupid? Well, presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, I mean, oh, professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but more than that, I don't understand how a video is going to be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Look at him nodding like yeah. he's caught me out. Yeah, what sound will you hear? Do, 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 Ooh, do, do, ah. do, do, do. Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises. It's occasional it? groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> but I thought you were going to point out, Carl, that they could have had a Braille porno. Now, have yeah. you thought of that? Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. You're excited now. Yeah. yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's a good-looking lady. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 104.9 XFM, hello. Uh, I'm Carl. Ricky and uh, Ricky Gervais and Steve aren't here. So we're uh, we're playing through some of the best bits. I say the best bits. Uh, it's the bits I came across first. I mean, I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. I'm, I'm a busy man, you know what I mean? So um, here's, here's another bit. What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do this? You, do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, or this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, well, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like we, in the future we, if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? Fine, yeah. Well, we've talked about this before, haven't we? About uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is going to be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure, right? okay. So, growing up on this estate, and there was, a, there was this woman about four houses down, right? It was a bit rough, <laughs> all right? Didn't fancy her. Oh, God, no. Right, but she had a Why? baby. But tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. What it, was she? It was a very... Was it like being a man in a dress? I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, does she look like? But anyone can... Tattoos? ...clean up. They like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which, even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still... Try and make the place look nice. Yeah. Right? But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. 
Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? Where did he get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> Mustard Has on. you seen the horse do it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of leather? <laughs> right. Um, oh, that's great. I'd Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> <and> looking <laughs> for it? I, I, I'd been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, so let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> Where did he get a horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? His mum said, where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right, then. But keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catelyn, rustling. Where did he get a horse from, Carl? And how long did he have it for? Was he leading it or riding it? Mum, open the door. I can't stop. I can't stop it. Open the patio door as well. Looks like we got us a runaway. What do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think... He had to... a horse? Yeah, right. So That's I... why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway... Yeah, it's so... to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it, it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so, I, so I was, like, in the car with my dad, coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round. And, yeah. Uh, and you know, sort of go back to to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> oh God! This is, what? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this because it's always going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. I mean, I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? From that classic first album, Velvet Underground and Nico, which apparently peaked at a disappointing 171 in the US charts. Think of that. And that's obviously Lou Reed, the Velvet Underground, and uh, Waiting for the Man. Yeah, great track. So we were talking, uh, we were doing White Van Man. And uh, we got on to... Uh, um, we got on to, to genetically, genetically modified babies. But and then somehow Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse. And then he got on to... He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family and who had the horse in the family? It was... Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's well, relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but, you, but, but what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, what, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a... And no disrespect to her. A bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. I knew it was going to be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I've never got that close to her. Okay, all right. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a, I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they, they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse. No, in what there. happened was I was um they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? But forget well, I don't know, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making over. So <laughs> you're a charity. So um <laughs> so I asked my mum for some because uh, she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups. And uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about 25 plants on it, selling yeah. them for 25 pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they, did you just cut, you didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil? Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs, because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went... The up, horse went, thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've, they've, they've been feeding me kitty cat. Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah. A horse in the living room. <laughs> you know. We've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. And it looked quite happy and everything, because... I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that. No, but I was saying this the other day. Right? And an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Commodore the other day. 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people, always have dogs. And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got... That dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that... <laughs> no, it does eat, though. They're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse... Was, was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's... That's, what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family, who's a bit... What we were talking about, it was about cloning... Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> So Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now, the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Ste Stephen, this is. You look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family... Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This, this, um, this, this, this family who had a horse in, the, in you know, in, the, in their house, yeah. they had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not going to believe this, but it's a beautiful-looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And uh, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid. But as time went on... They didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit... <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. no. <laughs> it used to chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> oh, God. Now, was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch th sticks? It's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on... And all that, like, not eating properly, and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became an ugly kid. It's definitely Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you're brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Wow. Life. wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. Ooh. But am I right? Uh, you're always right, Carl. All right. This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits, hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. And now it's Carl's bit. It's Carl's, it's the re-education of Carl. He's like Liza Doolittle. And now he's, uh, he's coming to, or Lawnmower Man, if you've seen that film. More like Lawnmower Man, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I mean. Um, uh, and uh, his homework was to just study quotes, really, on, on happiness and stuff in general well-being. He's not a big happiness uh, quote fan, are you, Carl? Not really. So what have you done? You've, you've come up with something, haven't you? Right, yeah, I told you, right? Because a lot of these are just things you say every day. They're nothing special. Um, so what I'm doing... Well, you say them every day. Well, <laughs> the sort of things you come out with and you don't even think about it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, in, they're on the TV all the time, people on the radio are saying these sort of little quotes. Sure. And, um... What I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um... <laughs> Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4. <laughs> just going to get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, Carl. come in. Yeah, TV yeah. producer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. And we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay, then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. We'll write down yours, yeah. A, B or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it works. Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, <laughs> don't no, worry, I know. We're, we're clever. No, no, no we, know, we, we know, we can't see yet. Uh, like, yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God, we're getting to the bed.
burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no this might not be Carl's. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put it with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Here. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food. Come on. It stinks a bit. But if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what to say! <laughs> I don't know what to say! Imagine this in faking it! Imagine their faces when he says that! And they're going, oh my god! Oh. Carl, play a song, mate. <laughs> oh, we'll have to confer on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on in. Right. Uh, first one. Nothing is worth more than this day. Excellent. Next one. What does that mean? Well, cherish, cherish yep. now, cherish your yep. time. Okay. Because you, you you can't get it back, and yep. you know. That's where um, I saw it. Carpe diem, whatever it is, seize the day, and all that. Okay. If you want the rainbow, you've got to put it with the rain. Yeah, of course. Yeah, rough with the smooth. You know, it's not all plain sailing, but you know, rainbow is beautiful. But it comes because of the rain, which you might not like. So yep. make the most of everything and. Yeah, yep. good. <laughs> Cat food doesn't smell good, but if you don't put up with it, then the little kitten will die. Right, now, Carl, that is a good effort. Now, that one's yours. I mean, obviously, right? Right. right. No, no, but it's a good effort, right? I mean, it slipped seamlessly into the others. Yeah. I don't think it didn't. <laughs> no, but it's, it's good. I mean, we knew it, we knew it was that one. But um, what I will say is, it's good, but what you don't know, maybe subconsciously, is, I mean, it... it it's n very similar to uh, the putting up with the rain and the rainbow. But what, that's why do you think that? Well, what what does mine mean? Well, uh, ev well, even though it smells bad, it's good for something. Right. So see, I, I didn't look at it like that. What, what did you look at? That? Uh, I I kind of thought. Was yours more specifically about cat food <laughs> generally? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know normally they like it's an analogy. Yeah, or a metaphor for something. You know. Much well, bigger. well, no. The way I, I mean, Do it. Dolly Parton, who I think did the rainbow rain thing, she wasn't specifically concerned about weather conditions. No, it was a sort of general idea. Yeah, it was all about yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what I've done. Go on. Okay. Well, I've well, used well, an everyday thing. Yeah. And put it with today's problems, right? Go on. So like. Um, my girlfriend, yeah? Um, she might like to go shopping for clothes. I hate it. Right. But because of, cause I love her, I put up with it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah? Yeah. So, you, you love that little curtain. You can't stand the smell of the stuff you've got to feed it. But because you love it, you go, well, you know, I'll put up with this just for a few minutes and then I can, like, squeeze its head later and give it a little... <laughs> <laughs> squeeze its little head. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's just the thing that I do with cats. <laughs> Put it in a bag and drown it in a lake. <laughs> I can feed it and then I can throw it against <laughs> yeah, the wall. Exactly. So you, yeah. didn't, you didn't see it like that, did you? No, that's very good. So it's about love, is it? It's about putting up with the bad things yep. for, for, for something you love. Yeah. Well, that's nice. But, but, but Carl, good. you seem now to be convinced and rather smug that you've tricked us and that you've fooled us and that we didn't understand it. Well, but I say that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, though. I mean, look, that man in Forrest Gump, he was a bit of a nutter. <laughs> And he, he came up with the life is a box of chocolates thing. Yeah. Now, if that was in this book, you say, oh, yeah, brilliant, you know, a good bit of work. But if he was sat here doing the show with you, yeah. you'd be taking the mickey out of him. Sometimes I feel he is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Carl, I could, I could, in fact, if people are out there, we're too lazy, could you write down everything Carl's ever said? Because I think we could publish that. Yeah. He said one today, he saw my um, uh, salamander. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> he saw my salamander and it's just sitting there in the tank. Your exotic pet. Yeah, and he's worried about there's not being a lid on. And he said, I went, what were we worried about? He said, he said, well, he said it sits there for 24 hours a day, obviously planning to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got nothing else on its mind. And it's, the, the daft thing is, he has actually got the, like, the lid ripped up a little bit. <laughs> And I'll be looking up there. Yeah. And it's going to get out. But what's the worst that could happen? What's Carl? it thinking? What do you think it's thinking, this salamander? It's got its eye on the DVD player. <laughs> 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 I can have E and be down the market. Class. Class. <laughs> Rock the I love the fact you had at least three minutes to get that right. I to know. To and get that right. I know, but my mouth was full of uh, Maryland cookies. Mm. Yeah. You know, last week, mm. th this would oh, this would blow your mind. He came in, do you know what he'd bought for himself at uh, about ten? Penguins. Mm. Who buys penguins still? I know. Or wagon wheels. 
Oh, I've never liked Wagon Wheels. Have <laughs> you not been a fan? No, no, but I'm oh, sorry about that. It's The Clash and Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. um, talking about records, have I told you that time my brother-in-law, um, uh, he was moving out of his place, I think moving in with my sister, and I was about, like, um, I don't know, 13, um, and so he was about, I don't know, 30, and I moved in, and uh, he brought round all um, uh, his records when he was storage to, to leave him at our house. Right, mm. and he had all these old sort of records, fifties and sixties records, no, I was right. and uh, um, and uh, they uh, put them upstairs. And I was looking through them, and uh, it's just all like Elvis stuff and Beatles stuff. And there was a mate of mine who loved Elvis, okay, mm. and he had um, well, loads of chemicals. <laughs> yeah, he had loads of chemicals, and I was into chemistry, and uh, he said I swapped me some chemicals for them. So I sort of nicked about five Elvis singles, and I got all these chemicals, and uh, and then the guilt just hit me I just thought well he's gonna notice that and I just I one night I just came downstairs and I confessed to my mum and she went all right well I won't tell him but you've got to be good and it's sort of like I was just really really good for a year mm -hmm. and then I remember um, when I was about 18 uh, my brother was talking about it and he said did you ever um uh, play those records I left for you <laughs> brilliant he told my mum he said these are for Ricky she just didn't tell she me. She was sharp, wasn't she? Oh. She, she used opportunism there. Oh, that's genius. And uh, that was it. That's that's but, why I was good. But you've <laughs> never you've never stolen anything since, have you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Except know. that spate of uh, of shoplifting after that to teach your mum a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I went round uh, and uh, arson. Mm. Uh, no, no, I did. I, I I just couldn't believe it. I just oh, that's it was great terrible. I, I remember. Um, and I think all kids go through a phase of shoplifting. Well, um, and. I, I, when I was going through it, hmm. um, I used to just just little things, just like magic markers and uh, magazines, Mars bars, that sort of thing. Yeah. And one day, right, uh, that me, me mate Anthony, his mum called up my mum and said, "I've got to, uh, I've got to meet up with you. I've got to have a word with you." And uh, she said, "What about?" She said, "I don't want to talk about it over the phone." So she goes, "Oh right, well, yeah, come round tonight then." So anyway. My mum sees me, she, she don't want to be in an awkward position and, like, be a bit embarrassed and what have you. So she sees me and she goes, right, Anthony's mum's coming round. What have you been doing? Yeah. So I go, oh, God. I said, I've, I've been nicking stuff. So she goes, like, what? So I, not, not big stuff. I've, I've had a few calculators and uh, Mars bars and stuff. How many? I'll just work it out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Works out at 7.2 per day. So, um... How so many calculators do you need? So, anyway, <laughs> so it was when that phase... You every, failed maths, didn't you? <laughs> everyone wanted a calculator. It was like a trendy thing, wasn't it? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. In Manchester a couple of years ago, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> So, anyway, so I told her all this and I confessed... Like, Computers will make it there, won't they? <laughs> I confessed to... There's magic in the back. <laughs> yeah. Of battery. <laughs> Go on. Confessed to nicking all this stuff. She comes round. She only wanted to borrow some money. <laughs> Brilliant. She said, Brilliant. Oh, I, I don't like asking. I was a bit embarrassed to ask you over the phone, but can I borrow 20 quid? Oh, that's fantastic. And there's me. <laughs> that's great. And it's the oh. sort of thing to yours. And, did you and he went, hold on, I'm let you work out the interest on that. A bank of 10%. She'll owe you £4.40. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did, so, so your mum was a loan shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, did, 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 uh, did she mention she that went, you I just, I just stuff with, your, with that other... Because yeah, what I'm saying is, presumably, you got no, your mate no, in no, trouble. No, 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 no. Right, That's ask. great. Anyway, should we have some more music? Yeah, yeah we've been waiting for What are you going to play, Carl? We've got the Cooper Temple Claws. Oh, brilliant. Up. Cooper Temple Claws. Who needs enemies? Good question, lads. Nobody. <laughs> Six <laughs> FM, 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Oh, they you. should print a little book of those. <laughs> <laughs> They're great. <laughs> oh, how you can relate any song or artist <laughs> to anything else. Easy. Joyful. Easy. Well, yeah, so uh, m me and uh, me and Carl went out uh, for a beer, and it was uh, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, enjoyed start, myself. We started yeah, off, good. and you met my mate, Robin, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh... Um, some of the stories. Do you want to tell Steve some things about Robin that you learned? Do you know him well? Yes. Well, um, do you know about his, his worm problem as a kid? Go on. Right. He, uh, what I can remember is he, he had worms as a kid. Not sure how you get them. He never answered me. He was getting a bit touchy about it. Right. I, I, this is like the second time I met him. I think he was a bit annoyed that Ricky told me about his problem. What, yes. now, what, uh, now, straight away, you not being there, instinctively, what do you think went on with this story about worms? My suspicion yeah. is rather like when you told a group of people that Robin had once suckled milk from a cow's udder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told I, that. yeah. Did you mention that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Th uh, my suspicion is that, uh, like the cow story, the worm story is not true. But and why, Robin... why would he get so sort of 
uppity about it. Well, imagine because if, it's not true. imagine if he, that wasn't the first time he'd done it. Imagine if he did that every single time <laughs> he was with somebody for the first time and Robin was uh, just met them. He tells that he will tell that story to anyone. But they do say there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> I also, I, I also told him that the way Robin cured these worms yep. was because the doctor told his mother, right, to hold a piece of ham or cheese near Robin's anus so the worms would come out for the food, and he believed it. I I'll said tell to, you why, though. I said to Robin used to sit on spam to try and get the worms out, and he believed it. But Steve, right, do you remember that story about th three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army... He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um, <laughs> messing about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, he walked through some lake, and I think he'd cut his toe or something on, on something, and some worm of some sort crawled in the in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body, and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap where some the skull is. So they wrap some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. They did. Ah, that's oh, not right. Everyone... So he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the the, the skull. Of course, it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard. The skull. There was there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they um, stuck some bacon on his head. And As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said, every, you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even worms. A worm, even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, they, <laughs> they, they, oh, they remember love Remember bacon. last week? Remember last week when I said about the little fella with the bone with no brain and you were proved wrong? No. Please. No, 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 no. We were saying it wasn't a little fella. We were saying it was a stillborn child. It wasn't no, a little you're fella. You're changing it now. You weren't having any of it last right, week. Right, hang on a minute. Let's just, I'm getting confused. There was a Vietnamese... There wasn't a Viet there was a Vietnamese snake that went inside of no, a soldier. Worm. A little like maggot or some sort <laughs> that you have to get out of your body because it causes problems. Yes, and so in order <laughs> to get it out of the body, they strapped bacon to his head. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. This doctor. And did that work? I think so. They had a picture of him smiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! What the worm or the bloke? The bloke. Oh dear. Honest, honestly, I, I hope someone knows a story and um, right. just. It was about three years ago, I reckon. Okay. And, um, yeah, it did work. G.I. So, G.I. Bacon. So this is why <laughs> I... I when, and so when what, the, wor the worm burrowed out of his head to get the bacon? Get to the bacon. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I this, is, this is why when Robin was telling his story, I, I was a little bit disappointed if it wasn't true. Right. Because in a way... You know Robin's never been to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I, I would do you really think that Robin... Well, as Robin said at the time, Carl, why would I sit on ham, then tell Ricky Gervais? <laughs> it's <laughs> a very good point. Because if he was a kid, you, d you do daft things like that as a kid. Right. It's the telling Ricky Gervais, though. Yeah. And then, yeah. oh, bless him. Okay. And, and then anyway, then uh, Robin left, and uh, I tried to chase him, but he got away. <laughs> he knows that we, uh, yeah. Um, and then we had a few pints, and then uh, Carl embarked on some of the greatest stories ever told. Have you? Can you tell the story about your dad? Let me run it. I haven't spoke to him all week, so let me run it by him. Okay, play records. Because uh, you know what we got. We've got. Uh, one of Steve's Yeah, well, bizarrely enough, this comes from the uh, Teachers 2 soundtrack, oh. the soundtrack to the uh, the current TV series. There's a slight whiff of nepotism in the air. Yeah. Rick, would you like to explain why? Well, that's why you're doing it. Though my girlfriend uh, worked on it. But yeah. um, you were going to play this anyway, weren't you? Well, I was, actually. Bizarrely enough, I was going to play some I Am Clute. And uh, this is from, as I say, the uh, the Teachers soundtrack. And this is called To You. It's a good track. That's I Am Clute, and a track called To You from the uh, Teachers soundtrack. That's also got, uh, I noticed, the Electric Soft Parade, the Hives, Star Sailor, Feeder. Uh, Turin Break, Smoky Rev on there. It's a good little collection. Lovely. Carl uh, has just had confirmation. He's looking smug because someone phoned up and went, it is true, it's a Lao Gai Chi worm and you wrap bacon around your head. That's all the bloke knew as well. Yeah. And his name was Gary. Yeah. So I'm not having it. No. And he said, he said, see, that's why the Robin thing isn't so weird. He said, but when you said he tried it with cheese, he said I was having none of it. <laughs> He's got standard strokes. Hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes, yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Yeah, go on. So, 
We'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah, always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> Lovely. So, would you like to start on your... Uh, to Steve, because I've heard all these. Um, uh, well, we won't do them all. Well, um, well, st we'll start off with the uh, the Mr. Freeze. Tell Steve the story of Mr. Freeze. This is the first time he nearly died. This this is the most serious of the lot, really. So, um, what it was, do you know, like, um, I don't know if your mum and dad did the same thing, but, like, they do the weekly shopping on, on like, a Friday. Yeah. So, when, when you got to Thursday, <coughs> there wouldn't be much stuff left in the cupboard. It'd just be, like, you know, your Jacob's crackers and mm. stuff like that. So, when they'd, when they'd been to the supermarket and they came back, I was like, uh, you know... What's that saying? Like a pig in... You know, I, I loved it. It was like loads of food coming in, loads of biscuits. He loads nearly of said, what is that saying? He nearly said pig in shit. <laughs> right. Is that the saying? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, all this food comes in. Thank God like... he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise he'd have been in trouble. That's true enough. Because he's, he's culpable for our actions because exactly. he's a producer. So technically, <laughs> that twat's in charge. Go yep. on. Right, so anyway, so there's loads of food and I'm like, oh, yeah, look at this and chocolate biscuits and, uh, you know penguins and stuff bacon so and bacon <laughs> just in case you never know so um so anyway my mum and dad's putting the food away me and our kid are like he's already grabbed something gone back upstairs <laughs> it's like feral children <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a quest for fire <gasps> <gasps> and then they run upstairs <laughs> it was, it, what did you sit under the bed gnawing at some sort of pig's trotter <laughs> so so i saw um do you remember mr freeze pops i do yeah so right. well, they're kind of like popsicles icicles yeah they? but really yeah. long like yeah, a foot yeah, long yeah. right yeah so I thought, I'll have one of them. So I grabbed it. Went for the nutritious stuff first. Absolutely. And, uh, and like, my mum and dad are putting this stuff away and what have you. And I, I rip it open and knock it back, right? Straight away, just right back like Swallow that. Swallow it right straight away, yeah. But it, it went down the wrong way, right? What, so I what was down like, your oh. shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like, oh, God, I can't breathe. And my mum and dad didn't, uh, didn't even know what I'd ate. Do you know what I mean? It went, it, I ate it so, f f so quick. Yeah. And uh, I'm sort of tapping my mum on the back going... Uh, She's going, oh, God, you know, he's, he's choking again, because I was always choking. <laughs> if there's one thing, I don't know if I've got, like, a small throat. But, but, I mean, even Ricky knows, I can't drink that much, can I? Yeah. Do you know, or I'm eat pebbles. A, I'm, I'm not a, f a quick drink drinker. I'd always, um, I think I'm scared of, like, swallowing stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was, like, bottle tops and mint imperials and stuff. I was always, I was always choking on stuff. Oh, jeez. So, so, anyway, she's going, oh, God, what's he picked up on it now? Drop it! Drop it! So, and she hit his, hit his nose with a stick. So I was going, oh, I'm choking. At this point, my me, me dad had, like, I think he'd put his, his share away, you know, his food away, and he'd gone... His to, share! I yeah. love it! Yeah. He'd, he'd gone to watch, like, Winner Takes All or whatever <laughs> in a lounge, and I, I was in the kitchen, and I was starting to, like, just... I didn't care anymore, do you know what I mean? I hadn't... I, I just got to that point where I wasn't struggling anymore. You just thought I'm done I just for. was, like, falling to the ground. And my mum's going, you know, get in here, I think it's serious. And uh, my dad comes in and sort of starts shouting at me, saying that's what you get for being greedy. He didn't even know what I'd eaten. Well, it was, it was the moment to teach you a lesson, certainly. So he's there like that, and my mum's going, oh, look at him. And my lips were going purple, and my eyes were rolling into the back of my head. You look like Marilyn Manson. And uh, so anyway, she grabbed me from behind and did that, that fireman thing. The Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winded me. And it came up, and I was all right. What, the whole like, popsicle came flying back out? I don't, I don't, you see, that's what I don't understand. Because there no, was nothing it, there. No, I mean, just, just a little there. bit. No, it swells up, doesn't it? Because it irritated it. So it went down your, your sort of like your epiglottis. It went down the wrong way. Like, it went into your air canal instead of your so, throat. And it, it sort of, it, it sort of spasms. And that's the, that's the fear. You've just got to calm it down and relax. So and in time, I would have been all right yeah, anyway. you don't, um, Well, no, yeah. you might have... So that's that. so so so, so that's hang on. One. So, but, but, so no, no, no. But the weird thing is, like for like three days after that, I felt like a sort of a uh, special person. <laughs> I was I went to school. I'm I did, not saying nothing. I, I did full days. <laughs> <laughs> a special needs person. <laughs> yeah. I, I went. I went to school the next three days after that. I didn't like wag it or anything. I did full days. I love that. Three days, turn over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I did. After three days, you thought, screw it. Yeah, well, did, did the quick history yeah. exam. Yeah. Mm. Right, next that one. Weird. That's popsicle. That's popsicle hell, we we'll call that. Right, next one. Uh, which one's the next one? Oh, what about your paper round? Right, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> And he means it. No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Oh. 
that. So you make your own rules. <laughs> Just think of that. Um, yep. You know, um, you sort of You're spreading information well, to yeah, people. Yeah, vital information. Giving a service. Yeah. And no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about when he's riding <laughs> around. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. So I anyway, I, I loved it. And even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and uh, go and do the round. And um, Why would you get up at half past four? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30, so I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> He'll ruin it for him. Yeah, so is it a good job or not? Go so 4.30 four I was up, up and about, and this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow, I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on with the fur on. I had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And uh, I went downstairs to get out and tried to open the door, and it was locked. Oh, God, so, uh, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. So I thought, oh, God, you know, I've, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was I had so much gear on. I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out of the window, and I'd, I'd, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah. Like, yeah the little yeah, arm goes yeah. on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a... He's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm. It's right. at that point where... You've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you got upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't listen around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so... And you could hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! <laughs> Hurry the up! Panther, ever so pink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. So, he th uh, uh, to cut a long story short, he gave me about four or five near-death experiences, and he went, and the whole point of this, he went, so that's why I think I'm going to die of something horrible, like cancer. And I went, why? He went, right, you ready for this? Yeah. He said, well, I don't check my balls. <laughs> right? He said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl, always check your balls. Do you I check don't yours? like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that... You've got all that going on in your body, right? And your skin's keeping it all in place. Right. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. We're going down a whole other avenue of discussion. Let's play a track. Let's come back to it. All right. This is Carl, the uh, producer of Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM 104.9. We're playing out some of the best bits. Hope you're enjoying it. Here's another one. Oh. His homework was to cut one of those stupid lateral thinking problems. Uh, we may, we maybe should give an, a, an example of the... Uh, oh, um, the Romeo and Juliet, right? Romeo's asleep on the bed, Juliet's on the floor, covered in water and broken glass. What happened? And you ask all these stupid questions, and it's... Romeo's a cat and Juliet's a goldfish. Again, Awful. what am I thinking? Yeah. Right. Yeah, come on then, Carl. Right, um... Yeah. There's a bloke lying on the floor, right? He's cut his head, blood's coming out of his head, <laughs> and all his mates come running up. And they're all stood round him, yeah. and uh, they don't take their hats off to, as a mark of respect. That why, is outrageous. Why didn't they take their hats off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uh, laughing 
But it's probably as good as the oh, real absolutely. ones. absolutely. A bloke's fallen with his... Yeah. He's lying on the floor. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. His mate's come running he's, up. He's, like, oh. wasn't it was it important that his head was cut? Um... I don't know. I mean, would, it, would, it, would it have been okay if he'd have been wearing a hat? He wouldn't have been dead if he was wearing a hat. Well, what's your answer? No, you're meant to answer a question. You don't just go, what's your answer? You say, what's well, it turns out? You go, no, and I have to guess. It's obviously like sort of a motorcycle stunt team or a parachute. Why, why didn't sorry. they take their hats off? Because they're probably still on the motorbikes or something. Or... Well, yeah, but if you mark, mark a respect to someone, you could take your helmet off. <laughs> Angry. What? They're parachutists. <laughs> why, can they, why can't they take their helmets off? Because they're still they're coming down from the sky. Still... But he's on the floor dead. Well, yeah, they... but they can look down and see him on the floor. Are they on the floor, Carl? They're on the floor as they're well. They're walking, they? aren't they? Yeah, well, they sort of stood there looking at him. They're stood there. Yeah. They're stood on the floor looking they're at him. They're soldiers. A... Why? But why? if Because it might be in a battle zone. They might have their zone. helmets on. And he's, he's been right. shot in the head. No. They're... Well, that does work. <laughs> you see, this is my point. That one works. <laughs> That one works. Unless you've given us a piece of information where that doesn't work, what yeah. what what's the difference? Why why is yours different to he's been shot in the head in the trenches and they're looking at him and they keep their helmets on? I just don't don't think it matters as much. If they're in the trench, they're already guarded a little bit, so they could take their hats off. It's the best mate for God's sake. Okay, <laughs> he's dwelling on this. Are they normal hats? Well, go no, ahead. I'll give you the answer. No, don't get ratty. What right. kind of hats are they? Baseball what hats? If I told you what sort of hats they are, you'd have the answer. Wow! Okay, I've got to guess what sort of a hat it is then, have I? Right. Uh, um, is it a trilby? No. Is it a bowler? I know what it is. What? They're spacemen. No. Oh, that's a good that one. That one works as well. That's, yeah. This is my point. I like that one a lot. It works. He's fallen on the moon, and there are oh, not that the moon happened. It was set yeah, up, wasn't it, in the studio. studio? We know that, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Carl, what's your answer? Builders on a building site. <laughs> Why is that different to soldiers? Because bricks don't fall in wars. <laughs> <laughs> but bullets fly. <laughs> right. Let's play a record and we'll come back to it, Carl, oh. while you think about what you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've uh, embarrassed let's yourself. Let's play some classic suede. Yeah, and this is for David and Kieran, I think, who wanted a yeah. bit of bit of butler. XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Baines with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier... A certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, he probably came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything, it was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. You there was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's this well, gun's not clean? I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shining. Well, he's got to do that, it's more distant. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know... I don't know like, what the ins and outs of it are, but... Um, uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into. That's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, like, the, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you at the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yeah. yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not going to go. And I go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like that. It, is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> yeah, then. Exactly. My, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because um, he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. <laughs> And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined <laughs> back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me, mum, saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all right, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway, up. go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sergeant, and said, Can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined, and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. 
Like she, she's one of them. It's, I think it's a northern thing. Like saying, "How are you, Chuck?" Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, "My brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go." Which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, that's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now listen, tell her I've told you. But can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean the brother. sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. <laughs> you can't do it. But you that's got, ludicrous. Uh, I love it, that. Oh, we went over the top. Built no, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. yeah. Is this is this really your mum? Yeah. OK, no, this seems to be in you order. They, you, because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Yeah. Now, you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. OK, you definitely wrote this yourself. Your excuse. You're going to have to d d um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> if, if he was needed, he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no, obviously. But were the, the other army, soldiers going around just going, what? <laughs> Bilkington. <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, Going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that Honest to up. God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. First of all... Um, he gets a call from his mum, going and let him up, and he goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was... Sleeping yeah, I, with his wife. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, did, I was. Did quite your young. mum phone up and say, "Let him off"? <laughs> <laughs> so Let him off this time. Him. Can he? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about eleven years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their back. It's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult, and he had a house, and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> And now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he oh, hasn't I, I seriously haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I, I haven't even spoken to always him. Uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'd like to leave you uh, with, a song for the ladies. Oh, <laughs> that's feeder and come back around. It's a new leaf, Steve. I've, I'm oh. going to do, do properly now. I'm not going to be slovenly. I'm sitting up straight, you see. Yep. And it's going to be a proper DJing because I think coming up soon some great tracks, including a new one from Abs and an old one from Snow. <laughs> Informer, <laughs> you don't mean that if it's me a boom, a licky boom boom down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks. Good some stuff, great yeah. chat. And we've got Carl that's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve, I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is indeed with him, Steve Merchant and uh, Carl Pilkington, of course. Say hello, Carl. All right. Yeah, nice. And uh, you, you say you read... The beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you could choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on the Planet. I'd love to hear it. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, because I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time, and they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I can just imagine them putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he, he just bought a car and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, money for nothing. Just, to, just <laughs> really? to, He just played that, I've never heard the song before, just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song off the, uh, the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound <laughs> yeah, systems. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier, you saw someone... Uh, are you... Are you... Uh, yeah, play, yeah, it was a, one of those zooped up sort of um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big, like a Monday or something, one of those big... And uh, it was blaring out, and the bloke in it was sort of like, I could tell he was 24, but already going bald. Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency job, not too <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. But he's made a bit of money, and he's got... And the stereo was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud, and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing snow in form. <laughs> oh, 
I just, do people remember Informer by Snow? It was a big I tune in my I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah, I, I always enjoy can it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? Well, you can play a tiny little bit. A tiny little bit of Snow. Yeah. Do you remember Snow Car? You love it. Yeah, big tune. Yeah. Loved it. Oh, did you? Big tune from the 90s. Happy song, right? You were saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in all aspects of your life, or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because uh, the reason I bring that up is because, do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because well, you're a forty, you're a forty-year-old man. No, you put on a little bit of weight, so presumably yeah. you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it sounded exotic. I went Can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't, I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And. I'll, can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right, it looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You've just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, like the size of a CD case, or yeah. one of those double albums, yeah. right, of yeah. cheese, right? And just lightly melt that for me so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've been yourself. Is that yourself. what it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got, I, I thought, Ooh. I've never heard of a croque monsieur. You haven't, let's see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced, or is yeah. it croque monsieur? Hey? <laughs> eh? You didn't not... expect me to be bringing out the French. Hey? <laughs> eh? Tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. La plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So, what was it then? A crop, it was a crop yeah, and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too... And it was all wobbly. I, 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 well, I like toast, I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like, what? This is rubbish. Play Coldplay. <laughs> Coldplay. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. Yeah. Well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Word. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in the, in the interim. I imagine. Yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, which, uh, <laughs> coming soon. Thirty two. But uh, uh, wait, I just, to, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. When did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Because um, we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It's quite yeah. a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours, it four and a half hours or something on the train. Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite sort yeah. of gentle thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. Exactly. And uh, and they, they bankrolled that. They paid for it all. And yeah. uh, that was all not very nice. And, uh, and as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I... Now, that was that was before... I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I, because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that that was so that was just before I had to pay one hundred and sixty five pounds to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? One hundred and sixty five pounds, Ricky. I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So I mean, do you want to go halves on that, or what do you want? How do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole that whole mess? Out? Why were you late? Why, why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, do you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic? But it was only it was only three minutes away, so you'd no, have missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it'd been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr to the airport, and I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. He was saying, we're never going to make it. He goes, you were a religious man. You better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. But hold on. Why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picked up a well, quarter past four? It makes you wonder. So, obviously, li I'm a little bit annoyed. Because, you know, I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait. But well, this is not my fault. Because you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be it. It's both our fault. I mean, it's no, no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore, it's both our financial obligation. No. £165. Just split that in half. Write a cheque, Rick. Write a cheque. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I trust you. Yeah. you know. um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This is. You're clearly obvious. responsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. The but phone, it's, just, a more, it's a moral dilemma. This isn't it. But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was going to get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the No, because I got Because you get bored sitting no, there. So there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about... I was there about 30 minutes Oh, so early. you made it fine then. That was... Well, that exactly. Was so, I mean, I did... I, I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this. You were going to get it at quarter past four anyway. 
Yeah, that... but I would if I'd gone the other direction, not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in wow, time. Wow, would we? Would we? Well, Is yes. that true? Wow. Only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> 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 what I mentioned it to. So, uh, I'll tell you what will cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than that, shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, right. Bruce Springsteen off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I'm a Springsteen we're, we're, fan. We should just qualify this, because a lot yeah. of people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. Yeah. They just think he's this old, kind of ludicrous 80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the flying the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, don't confuse Bon Jovi. Them. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the 70s, yeah. and he just got a little bit kind of pompous in the 80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes, one of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. Bit of Springsteen there, Brilliant Disguise on XFM, 104.9. I think that's, that soothed you a little bit. That's, uh, that's Not really. taking the blood off. I, I just remember something as well. 80 quid, Rick, 80 quid. You know what, um, we finished the talk at about sort of three, and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the, uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the the taxi and uh and we were eating in this cafe and uh and steve said how long's your train journey i said oh, four and a half hours he went so you uh, what time you get i said i'll get in about 10 he went half six me uh, and he's quite smug and i went yeah i said it is it's quite a long time i just started to sort of relax now uh, he went yeah i said but he said i think i'm come off better here because usually you've organized all this stuff he said but i think you've chosen wrong here. i think oh, i said i think you're right <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you think those words were coming back to haunt <laughs> me as I was handing over 165 notes? I was, all I was thinking was, and Ricky's I was going to be loving in it. First class, drinking uh, John Smiths yeah. and listening to Mercedes Walkman. Yeah, but I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid, and I went fine. I handed over a card. Uh, yeah. It was a switch card. She said we don't take switch. Don't they? I was thinking, how? What am I going to do then? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to get the money from. What did you do in the end? Then? Well, Go look, I had another card. Oh right, and um. And she managed to accept that one, but I I don't know what I'd have done. I don't genuinely. You didn't don't know tell what me done. you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is different. I was so depressed because I just kept thinking about what I'd said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time because normally I'm always like legging it for tubes or I'm just do you know where I get stuck in the rain or and something. I've I just organised never seem a drive or something. Travel. Because when you get me, I said, "Why? It's up to you. It's up to you." You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours, and I was just in that forty minutes on the tr on the plane. There'd have been no problem. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know, I got off the... Because I was not very well either. I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane and I thought, well, I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home. But, you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid. Got the tube. Took me forever. Really? I'm not going to lie to you. It took me forever. Oh, so I got, I got in probably later than you did. <laughs> around the 11 o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I was so depressed. I'm really depressed, Rick. So I was I say know. 50 quid. Well, money... Right I mean, Steve does not like to waste money. And, um, I mean, by that, I mean... I mean, I don't like to spend money. No, um, we had to, he had to go out and get a shirt for a photo shoot. Not a quite an important photo shoot for I think the, the Times. Right, went out he, buying a shirt, buying a shirt. Went out, planned it, went short. Came back four ninety, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming. He aimed straight for Henny's. He knew he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away. Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it. Remember that time when we went to the casino for my birthday? And I was, like, 100 quid down. And some people were 100 quid up and 100 quid down. Uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down 20 pounds, genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Because yeah. I don't. Well, it's because it's a, it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we? Because I went there. It was. Uh, when it was one time we went there. It was uh, our agent's. Oh, birthday. that was another time we went yeah. there. Right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, got a win, he was 30 quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. And the round was more than 30 quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was. I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. He didn't, I didn't see him buy one. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling you drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not going to get any kind of, I'm not going to see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Because he came in I'm with not, his Most of you are married or engaged, so I'm not even going to pull from it. It was, was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it, pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth £10 each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. £30 up. That's a lot of money, Rick, uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. 30 quid, you don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? There's, we've got lots of songs in. It's our bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh.
Oh, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, but I'm a fan of I, I like slow songs, but I, I, I really, really do like it. I've, been, I've always been a fan of it, even from, you know, early days. Yeah. I, I, I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it, because they were expecting, like, you know... The verve. Yeah. Yeah. Urban hymns and all that. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round-headed oh, fellow? Oh, he's Carl Pilkington. Carl, we haven't had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. Just what happened? You, you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early... an early flight. Yeah. Um... And it's just annoying me, because there's... there was, like, people on the plane fighting over, um... where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like they wanted to sit next to the friends and that. And it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together. So that's that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, forty minutes. Yeah, and I just don't understand this sort of. You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, wh why do you have to sit next to the person anyway? To be honest, I mean, fair enough. If you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for forty minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? What are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really... Know, if I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not if you're going to talk like this. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, this is... This Carl, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. There's just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. Why is it still stewing he's, you he's, up? He paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He 165 quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're going to bring it up, if we're going to mention it... <laughs> and it's like, what have the back to him? Like, he's, he just, just... He goes... He said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money, is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve... The I'm not spending that much merchant, and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There yeah. are certain instances in life where, you see, you know, you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 shut no, up. No, Let no, me defend no, myself. No, it's not, not that I'm tight with money. It's that I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because uh, you know, I you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe as pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had is be money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm going to spend it wisely. Like for instance, you might be, say you're in a party or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday. You get talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening, she says, oh, da, 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 I've got to go and meet my boyfriend now. Right? She's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now, she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend, and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved on. I'd have what, looked on. What it's if like she thought she was just having a chat with another human being? Though, Rick, where you, I'm being deliberately <laughs> deceived <laughs> so people can extract money from me or interesting conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after. It was yeah. obvious. The yeah. drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, the beady eyes. And, 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 and yet she she was leading me on. And she was a prostitute. And think how we felt about that. I mean, what a no, slap in the face. let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She, she could occasionally have slept with me for, for, for money. <laughs> it she wasn't for money, it was for meals. Yeah. It no, but the <laughs> point was, no, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life. It's like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, sh the clock is ticking as far as yeah. I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if, if, if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll or move on. Badge. I won't bother you. Or yes, please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of badge You see, system. the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to, you know what I mean? You won't be able to say, <laughs> have you really got a boyfriend? No, I just think there should be some kind of sort of, this sort of there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, because they know, yeah. I, they can see what I'm after. It's obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they walk down the, yeah, does that, has that yeah. ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in to, uh, uh work and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl uh, a pound, right? Because I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad of I me? don't think it is, you see. I don't <laughs> think it is. Because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl, then she deserves some of my money. I just mind. imagine him slowing down. I imagine him like, going past loads of tramps going, get out of here, get a job. And she goes, and go, ah. <laughs> Hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop her up in my arms, take her back to my place, and kind of turn her life around like my fair lady. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Good, yeah. Kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. You said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smiths, Cemetery Gates, great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off Queen is Dead. Voted best album of all time, I think, in the enemy poll. I don't think it is their Strange best album. Strange ways here we come. I agree. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking.
Anyway, Carl, yeah, so people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way, anyway? Because I saw you up there briefly with you and um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him. It, really. it was just, it was the way he was sort of looking at them, everything, like, he was just smiling at Nick Frost. He's, it's his new best chum. You right. love Nick Frost, don't Would you? you have preferred it, right, right <laughs> if I went to Edinburgh and, and I had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would, no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know? But right. I, 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 so I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick, and the and the nice people. But he, what but he kept going. He kept going. He kept going to uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And he th and Nick and Simon. Well, all it was right. And they're ghost stories. That's he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh, it's not, not just that. Great oh, like, a great sense of humour. Just because they believe in ghosts. You go and tell him that. He goes, how do you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me? And it was completely wrong. About the. It was. Uh, Oh yeah, right. It's years ago. Oh yeah. Uh, some, some in olden days. Oh sure. When ghosts like, roamed the earth. What's upon the time? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some doctor or something who was into like the way bodies work. Um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did the doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off. He, yeah. Okay. And it was about. Um, he said, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink my eyes." Right. Okay. Sorry. Hang on. Let, let him finish. <laughs> And, um... So the doctor has so chopped his right, own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm going to blink my eyes. To no, he's in the, he's in the basket and he goes like, right, I'm going to blink my eyes about, you know, as many times as I can. So quick, count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he, he, he right. died. Right, now this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, Carl told, you know, he said, right, well a bloke, right, he had his head cut off and, as, and when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well, that's rubbish. No, and Nick went, well, no, he, he actually said, when my head's in the basket. Uh, he went, and Carl went, oh, right. I said, I said, Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to say, though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, you've well, both well, lost me. Uh, the story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, did, uh, You mean uh, that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke. Had his head cut off for uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off, um, why did they cut his head off? Because um, uh, it was uh, he it was, was crimes against exactly he was executed. Yeah. And uh, uh, he said to his assistant, "When my head's in the basket, I'm going to blink. Count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment." Right. Carl told it to me like his head was cut off and he went in the basket. And when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, <laughs> "Count how many times I blink." <laughs> Yeah, I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah, yeah. both rubbish. Yeah, but, um, you know, one's one's Why possible you, you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told, except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got we got talking about. Sure. Yeah. And Nick uh, Nick said, right. He said you'll like this one. Huh? He said uh, my uh, my auntie um, was having loads of problems. Why are you in whispering? It? It's not illegal like, to talk ooh. about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but it's eerie. And, this. Um, so, um, <laughs> the aunt is in the house and that, and, um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh, God. And they were like, no, oh, this Oh, is... Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to sit back and <laughs> enjoy it. I'm just going to watch your face, Steve. Right. Sorry, so, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an aunt right, Basically, house. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, and it was just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like, oh, <laughs> it's just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> It was one part annoying to two parts scary. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need an housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort Stop this out. Stop it! <laughs> I've got the vicar coming round. Stop moving I love stuff this. around. Oh, yeah, go on. They said that shouldn't be in the pants drawer. <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room. That's a mess. And have all the others <laughs> empty. Because I love the poltergeist can't really, o it can move for wardrobes around, but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could. F Go on. Yeah, but. So, so all this stuff's in this room. So they right? moved all their furniture everything into one room. They put like the drawers in there and everything. And <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the three piece suite was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh God! Right. All right. Oh God! So they sat there, like right, all crumpled up and that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move. Yeah, but yeah everything yeah, yeah. was so tight. It's they just boxed like, that report, guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that, and um, you hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> so uh, 
She goes, oh, God, what's that? Oh, he hadn't moved in, had he, the ghost? So, uh, <laughs> to some of the empty rooms. So there's this bang... <laughs> He's moved some friends and family in. <laughs> there's this banging about going on. No, so listen, 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 she, listen. she gets up, right? Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> so they go into the room where the baby is <gasps> and the banging yeah. is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck around the room and like, they go mental. Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? Wow, what, the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls and the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it, and it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room. It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve, the baby had been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so a baby a that super had the baby. power. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special, ba it's special a baby. It's a baby that powers. had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the, power the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah, it's not, it's not, like, it's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that stuff. Telekinesis is different. Yeah. That, that's yeah. A science. Um, but, ne but Nick's auntie saw it and... I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should, be, I should be satisfied with that. Yeah. I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean... No. So does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think uh, the baby grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew <laughs> the baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, innit? She she was upset for a bit and then she got over it. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play a record or? <laughs> oh. All right, on XFM 104.9. Can, can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, uh, I called him out. I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in them, but how do you explain this? So I went, go on. He said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, bloke, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with his, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cos your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they came and said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out. And, they, uh, uh, and uh, he said, and then he went back it sat down, phone rings, and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> that's the end of the I went, story. What? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was going to say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> Right? I thought it was going to be that, and I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah, or, 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 um, someone did report a fire oven, and their name was Johnson, and they looked up Johnson, they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board, or, and they sent around to the wrong person, right? You know, he, he, went, he went, yeah, I said, I explained it to him, he went, yeah, why did they look at the cat funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man alive, Carl. This is really weird, right? I was, um... <clears throat> I was uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, and there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, and there were right, some, kids, and there was running some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door, and there was a bloke goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what did you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people... Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did you three different people did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen, about a wife that didn't exist, <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> what? And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. So right? these, are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts to walk the to walk the earth as the ah, undead, just winding oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts start wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh. Maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in the house of a fire or something. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it sort of all happened again. Bit yeah. Of a yeah. It's certainly a mystery. It's, I mean, certainly you know, it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I What's can't, this I... book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. It was. Um, it was the Fortean Fortean Times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl. Here's a track that will uh, that will spook you right out. This is Warren Zevon from, uh, was it, like about 1979, early 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that's Great track, track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh. As we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you aren't a People fan, who hate him would yeah. be interested in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think, Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it? Is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Because right. uh, <laughs> they've, they've sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So no, you see, two <laughs> things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two. been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have... Or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no. There's kids who've been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Steve, this is no. Too remember, easy. listen. Remember that time with the maggot and the head. Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said yeah I've, I've seen that I've read about that yeah, this is the same you, thing have as you is... seen an XFM listener up close have you ever looked they studied... drink milk from a saucer <laughs> yeah, yeah they've got to be kept on leads people who listen to this show there's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff there is it's comedy you see, gold when you, when you were out of school did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts <laughs> they taught us maths God, right, tell a story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as uh, as the one with the with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me a shame. Yeah, a cat that's <laughs> got a weird expression on its face yeah. is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like, yeah, physics. Explained. Physics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it right. was going on about the uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And uh, <laughs> they, put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. Never saw the manhole cover again. <laughs> <laughs> Man alive, Carl. <laughs> Unexplained. What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there. <laughs> oh. If anyone has ever seen that manhole cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch. We'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything. What would you do to a man I'll cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, have control yeah. of a nuclear Do you reckon it can send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What? What, of what value is that? I'm like, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out. <laughs> fire it. See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. I'll have a, toy bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the, the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. Smashing Hopkins. Today. Today, today is the greatest, because yeah. we're back. That's true enough. All right. I hope people uh, re were listening to that loud uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or I mean, I'll call, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy people. That, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. White Rick, van um, Carl. Yeah, white van Carl. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this... Uh, we ask Carl week. the questions that the Sun asks someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now. Um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Is it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. 
and he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, third third right. in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone right. smoking a cigarette is third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not concerned for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to... Smoke. I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, I, I think the trouble with um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things like that. Well, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl, you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. Sorry. Sorry. So yeah. we can throw these questions your way as well. <laughs> yeah, if you sorry, them. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. what's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. like you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Um, exactly. Uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier, and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well... I don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your It depends, your... doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you Well, most might people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but... Yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose is the, uh, the, the action no. in the Listen end. to the uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face. Look at that. He looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car. He's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I lo that's, is, that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats the entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow from mammoth? the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth. A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, if we'd if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we this mean. This is how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went count how many times I blink. Is it? I is Carl? Uh, Carl is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah? Okay? Yeah. Do, should we but, speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No. Go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we we have to bring, bring back, back prehistoric elephants. These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're going to like get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'd probably be like a fence, to be honest, Carl. They'd probably be a fence. No, but, I'm say, but, they're, but you're asking it as if like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, yeah. could it? Well, really? but, but 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 the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, "Oh, think about it before you do it." But <laughs> with a with a airy elephant, it's it's not going to. Not concerned for you. Would well, you go along to see him? Would you be interested in it? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? impresses No, him. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and, you know, Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um... Yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah, problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I might close around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my uh, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What's, what's as, the, as the words man-moth, came into your head. How excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's head? Just a little head, little man head. Right, what, what was his face? What did it look like? Just, he just was like a bit like, a bit, a bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it, like so, it was like he'd been he'd been he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth without yeah. his, his consent. And when he was asleep, no yeah, he'd woken up. He just he just went in for to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said we've replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah, just is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? I'm so sorry. he had the head of a, a little was it a little boy or a man? Little man, right? Okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you, if you uh, went into hospital and, and they'd done something, uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff, and uh, for like parties, people would play well, points. I the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that level, Mark's Local Club, spread your love. Are you enjoying it so far? Um, yeah, I suppose so. First show back. Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, Rick, to be honest. I know, still playing on my must, mind. I know, yeah. Could we maybe get like a sort of telethon type thing going or a little charity thing just sort of help me pay? You can't really ask people to send you money. Really? It's technically begging. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is Unless you're a are, you, are, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not. Not really. We could probably get you status. Yeah. But could I promise, I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. So Although you probably... You probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like to your own. Kind of not like everyone else doesn't. Not exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God yeah, knows yeah, what. Yeah. You know what I mean? The yeah. Put the people that work here. Small fry. The yeah. scum. Exactly. The nobodies. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, 165 quid is pretty. It's quite a lot of money. So I mean, if you want to contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I would if it, if I felt any responsibility. Right. Or, yeah, or, or sure, cared. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was uh, get you your plane and come back, because I'd have had time. Do you know, I, I was going to mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, because I knew the answer would be no. So <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal con I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. We've been looking forward to this. You're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't just he? A bit tired but it's interesting because I said to him, I said to him, "Did you enjoy Edinburgh?" He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, and uh, he said, "Yeah, well, after he loved it up there. He's been mm. partying every night, and he actually enjoyed it." And I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before. He's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know. And his I'm depressed that we weren't involved. His, pa his, his paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best. is the first time. Yeah, he was talking about that the other day as well. But I said, to him, I've, that's what "He really thinks that that paper round he had when he was fourteen was the best job." He never had. Yeah, he still yeah. thinks it's the best job because he was own. He said he was his own boss. Well, no, you weren't. <laughs> yeah. He went. Well, I'll get on my bike and think. And he said, "I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever." Had. He said, "In fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill." This is all. Yeah, all yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this. Yeah. He went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, "You don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best delivery service <laughs> you've ever had?" <laughs> no, but if I said I delivered it ten years ago. Um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got Carl, out if there. you could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If, you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week, would you do the best yeah, at... Yeah. Would you really? Yeah. Is would, there anyone out there who is willing to test that so anyone who's willing to pay Carl right a, grand. a sum of a grand yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers just for that week. all day though it's all day no 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 I'll what? get up and the, the customers will have their paper yeah but can I tell you what street it is no, because... I, no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yeah, thousand pounds. Pounds. Oh, no, you've got to deliver the M25. I'll tell you what, let's, let's, let's take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. I'll just play this, to be honest. It's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston there, by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh-huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant Jimmy Webb, who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my speech patterns. It's just, just using the English language is always helpful. Right? But compared to Carl, I'm, I'm Oscar Wilde, aren't <laughs> I? I suppose so. <laughs> Electric Soft Parade on XFM 104.9. Not long to go on our, uh, on our ret a triumphant return.
I think, uh, oh, I think the paint's going to be saying, Steve. Yes, yes. Um, Carl, um, I've I met Carl a couple of times in our, our, our sabbatical, and uh, he uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, said, I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> and if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co of course they wouldn't. <laughs> what have you chewed on? I said, he said, no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so, he said, when you swallow heroin in a, in a Johnny, he says, that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> That was it. Oh. And then uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you were? Yeah, I went, well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> they, they turn deadly when, when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when, when, uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting, they can yeah, cause get hilarious. So, 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 what, so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe Look, that? he thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but you won't feel... Eventually, 50 years' time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. 50 or 60 years later, he was dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. Oh. <laughs> then, out of nowhere, 40 years Wh later... Where has this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now... Yeah. ...and put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Dr. Fox... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up with didn't werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You've confused They're about three just different stories. It's a genetic though. mutation where the, you know, they were born with a uh, very, very hissute. There were a couple of kids, yes, They didn't we know. grow up with wolves and you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean, you're confusing two things. There were you? some kids who were very, very hairy, yes. Yeah. They're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves, yes. I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as werewolves, Carl. You, you believe me. I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a magpie. Of werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Yeah. What was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any um, any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is, it's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. Problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem, slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and um, they go in letter boxes. Right? Slugs go in letter. Get boxes. in letter, letter bo boxes. It's nice and warm in there. Uh, dry and what have you, and um, <laughs> these are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue. They've been eating uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And um, <laughs> people have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, I put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. <laughs> sure. And they also <laughs> eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem. This that. Uh, <laughs> Letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. I like are slugs like stealing postal orders and things and cashing them in and stuff. Yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor and a postman. So, uh, so postage is a real problem. Um, so oh. is, when we see when we see uh, a slug's trail, or a snail's trail, it's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's they've just. That's a little. I'm we, not, I'm not going to say yes to that, that I'm not follow, sure. But we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big sort of... <laughs> big bio uh, letters. Uh, yeah, our stamps and... Yeah, yeah, there they are. Like birthday cards for our Yeah, stuff. but two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill you, and slugs... Be very careful. Your if you're going to go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and Likewise, if you are going to post a letter, please, please do please, not use please. tasty glue. An envy. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Absolutely, yeah, hello. That clang you heard there isn't Carl. No. Carl's away. It's Sturgis. Claire Sturgis is here. Yeah. Hey. You'll know her from the Claire Sturgis show. 
but so we know it from our early days on XFM, yeah. and you know we're, we're good friends. It's sort of like uh, old times, isn't it? And Carl is uh, had a little surprise birthday present. What's the me? story with this, Claire? Because I don't well, know. Well, do you know? I, I came in on Monday expecting to see his little smiley face yeah. as yeah. usual, and uh, it's always not here. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? So, but his girlfriend had surprised him and dragged him off to the Caribbean for a week. Wow. No, Canary, isn't it? Oh, Canary, I mean, I yeah, don't know. He, he likes the Caribbean, he likes the crabs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was bored of the Caribbean, I thought he didn't enjoy it last time. No, he loved it, didn't he? No, I don't think he did enjoy no, the crabs. Tunisia he didn't like. Right. He's but been travelling, hasn't he? I know, yeah. He gets he, a break. He didn't like Tunisia because there's flies the size of matchboxes. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, midgets in the kitchen. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Midges or midgets? <laughs> midgets, he right. said. Right. It was kitchen. midgets. He wasn't saying anything bad. He said that there were lots of midgets in there. Lots of midgets in the and kitchen. And I thought it was, he'd, he'd gone away to some sort of, like, theme holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, this is, uh, I think, Grand Canaria, all the Canaries or whatever it's And called. how old is Carl? Wait, like, 30. Is he 30? Is 30 last week, I think, yeah. Oh, so it was oh. actually a birthday present. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, I just so, thought, but, yeah. but, but that's all right. So have you got a competition that you can uh, regale us with, Claire? Because, uh, obviously, Carl provides a lot on this show. Hold on. We could do what? White Van Claire. White Van Claire. <laughs> yeah. Have you, are you familiar with this? We ask no. you questions, uh, topical questions, just okay. getting your opinion really on the the week's news. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's on the spot. You but that. you know, I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit simple. That's well, fine. Just a little bit, you know. What? What? I always sit on the fence. Don't oh, right. Well, don't you sit on the fence. You see, the worst thing there was, she was saying, I'm a little bit, like, you know, uh, liberal. I was going to say, you went simple. <laughs> yeah. You well, assumed. I didn't, know, I didn't know. I thought, I'm a little bit, what, coked up? I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? It's Sturgis. Anything could be possible. <laughs> but but the other thing is with Carl, we didn't know how good value Carl was until we asked him sort of intelligent well, this questions. Well, true enough. Because yeah. he, he looks quite intelligent. Well, this is it. I mean, the thing with you, I don't think we've probed you enough. We don't know what, you know, your views are on a lot of me enough, actually. But we don't know what your views are, you know. This is what I'm saying. We yeah. don't know where you stand. I mean, don't sit on the fence. This is the, this is the new Claire Sturgis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're yeah, going to dynamic. find a personality in there, Claire. Let's go back right. to the old days. How about a bit of the Smiths? That was beautiful, Rick. Go on. Oh, you've been practicing. The Smiths. Cemetery Gates. It's a lovely tune. Mm. Lovely song. There's one bit that worries me about it. It's sort of like a, a like a teacher warning. It goes, you must contrive uh, prose and poems, and the words you use should be your own. Don't plagiarise or take on loan. It's sort of like, what are you telling us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of like yeah. a lot of people are going. Thanks, Marcy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the, yeah, that's not mine. That's Wordsworth. Well, I'm going to write my own. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Queen then, is Dead, though. One of the great, great I albums. It's titles. not my favourite album. I, I, it was voted best album. But of the all Smiths. Time, what I love about the Smiths, they just seem to get like the Smiths is that's, just a that's done, brilliant name. Yeah. Don't you think it just captures everything about yeah. them? Yeah. You know. We've got a thing about bad. Bad, yeah. Well, I was watching I was watching uh, VH1 Classic Smooth <laughs> last night. <laughs> and uh, I love it. Absolutely Sade. Joy. Sade always on. You yeah. can always get a little bit of Sade. <laughs> but um, Foreigner were on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, well, I don't know which, I can't remember which tune it was, but uh, the album I noticed it came from, classy album title, Agent Provocateur. Oh, as so oh, it makes my skin crawl. But I also, from the I, album Agent Provocateur. I, I imagine a, there's a, a band called Agent Provocateur, um, and they're from Wigan. It's a it's a girl singer. She's 35 yeah. in a tight dress, <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah. four blokes with ponytails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing covers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, here's what you may remember. They, they, they play a wedding. They go, "We're not doing a wedding again." There was people. There was, there was cake yeah. being trodden in. There was exactly. kids. Children were just sliding across the yeah. parquet floor. Yeah. They weren't yeah. listening to the music. But we, yeah, well, we've got a gig at the Marquee coming up soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, endless guest list. Five quid in. <laughs> Oh, 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 provocateur. If your band's Argent Provocateur or Agent oh, yeah. Provocateur, have you ever been in a band? Yeah, called Argent. Yeah, but uh, but that's got to be one of them because it's not. I don't know what that title says. I don't imagine Foreigner. I've got that sense of intrigue and well, one of my right, one of the worst names. But right, okay, to <laughs> pal. But right, it's <laughs> the worst. It's, uh, uh, yeah, let's start worst album titles. Okay, I'll, I'll kick off with to pal, Bridge of Spies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bridge of Spies. Is that the one that featured China in your hand? I assume so. I don't think I did too many. Um, Bridge okay. of Spies? Who did Bridge this of album? Spies? Who did this album? Um, Beggar on a Beach of Gold. <laughs> Beggar on a Beach of Gold. It's got the likes of Collins written all over it, but I know it's, it's not Collins. It's very close. Mechanics. Mike and the Mechanics, yeah. of course. I don't know what that means. Good old Mike He's a Mike. beggar on the beach of gold. Just look around, there's yeah. some money. <laughs> yeah, what he's saying, mean, he's saying, don't be a tramp. There's, there's some money it's there, though, mate. Man. I don't know what it means. I think he means that everyone else is rich, but he's still poor. Yeah. 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 I actually, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a bit deep for me, Steve. Maybe you just need a little asterisk at the corner and then a little explanation <laughs> at the bottom of the record cover. I'm thinking about this, I'm not quite sure what it means. Oh! <laughs> he's very nice poor emotionally. Um, Chumba Wumba. Well, you know, what, what can I... Uneasy listening. Yes! 
I bet it was from the Chumbas. Are uh, they still cracking on? Are they? Because they, they used so. to live in a squat. And They've done about um, 400 albums, them and the Levelers. Mm. Yeah. Who's the best? Chumba one brought the levelers. So, good question. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. What's the what's the telephone number, Claire? It's a 800 Or you can email ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Worst album titles ever. It's like real radio. It's isn't just it? like Chris Moyles. It is, isn't it? Exactly. Oh. We've got the big fat guys on the telly. <laughs> yeah. In here. <laughs> You know, and uh, uh, his well. kind of cheeky sidekick. Am I, uh, comedy Dave? You're almost as funny as Moyles. <laughs> Finger crossed <laughs> one day. <laughs> right, Sturgis, you've brought in a record, haven't you? What are you going to play? Well, What's no, this I all about? Wanna, the, do you know what, like, a, a bootleg is, Ricky? Oh, what yeah. are you talking yeah. about? Oh, yeah, I've yeah. stacked yeah. a lot of them up on white label. Yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Okay. Well, no, this is quite a good one that Ian Baker brought in the other day. Sure. It's uh, It's a bit of Dre, a bit of Snoop Dogg, oh, mixed yeah. in with Crowded House. I thought you'd love it. Oh, right. Right. The juxtaposition there is exciting in itself. That's true enough. Play it. The weather episode, uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Crowd House, I love that. Enjoyable. That yeah. works for me, Steve. Yeah, what do you think? Stuff. No, it was nice. Well, I she like started it. off all right. We'll give, should we give her one more go? I like a round of applause for Claire. Yeah, that, that's Claire. brilliant. No, that's excellent, that. I love that. Rick, the, yeah, the phone... Oh, it's just gone. <laughs> the phone, no, I tell you, the phone board had lit up there, Jimmy. Really? There was a call a buzzing call. through on call. A call came through. A call came through on line one, yeah. and Sturgis missed it. Carl would never have missed oh. that. He knows how valuable they are. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was probably someone with an amusing <laughs> album title. And I did get one, Steve. I didn't get one. Do you want to hear it? Go yeah, go on. Um, okay, uh, this is from Al, who yeah. says that, what about this? H to H E, who am the only one. Sorry, H to H E. H E. Who am the only one. I don't know what it means. No. Van de Graaff generator. Oh, wow, well, no wonder. That's the thing that you, one of those things at the museum that you wind up and you touch and it makes your hair stand on end. Yeah. That's the scientific thing, isn't it? Sure. I've given up, Steve. Yeah, no, you know, I know. That didn't really I make noticed. me laugh. Either, I'll be so. honest. I'm thinking that the whole kind of amusing album title thing we should abandon. I, I, I thought that. I, as I, I thought said it, it. Be honest with you. I thought it was easier than this. I mean, Chris Moles makes it work. That kind of crazy comedy okay, uh, uh, radio magic. But obviously, it's, it, we, and I don't think our listeners are into that stuff. Uh, okay, I just yeah. don't think they can be bothered to get to the front. I don't think a lot of them are able. I think a lot of them are, you know. Do you <laughs> remember when? Do you remember when we spent about three hours trying to get to the Chris, through to the Chris Moyle show? I vaguely, yeah. What was the? What was he the was doing this um, competition, <laughs> and it was um, it was uh, titles, song titles with golf about golf. Like so, we go like drive the cars, and yeah. that. And and I was blown. I was getting so excited. I went to phone up and go, ah, Duran Duran, golfy, golfy, golf, golf. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, yeah. and I just thought, and, and I, it might have been less to, oh god, yeah, it probably cost me about ages. thirty quid just yeah. to ruin Chris Miles' competition. Yeah, uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, those were the before days we when, we, when we realised, you know, he was a great talent and one to watch. Yeah, before we'd enjoyed his new TV show. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, um, that's not. No, that's cheap. It's, cheap. it's cheap. It's yeah. cheap. Anyway, um, what should we talk about now then? Because that was that. That all went well. <laughs> No, I mean that's twenty minutes. That's twenty minutes done, Fantastic. and we've nailed we've nailed amusing album titles. We've, um, we've done that. That's fine. So oh, we, we need uh, a new I, gimmick now. I'll tell you what. Uh, in it, you know, you know, <laughs> you've no, got something. You've got no, something. You've wait, got wait, something. Wait, wait. Oh, you know, got something you know when Here you go comes. out, you take an umbrella. You leave the right? house. You've got right, you go umbrella, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's a really sunny day. Yeah. And then you come out and you go. Oh, I've I wish I'd bothered with that because yeah. it's in the way. But then, right? Imagine when you go out, right? It's and raining. It, it's raining. No, no. You go out without an umbrella. <laughs> okay. And then it rains. <laughs> oh, what's, no. what's going on there? Oh isn't no! That weird, isn't it? We've so all you, been there. So We've all been if there. you've got like funny, weird observations of things that happen like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that about umbrellas or any kind of sort of yeah. accessory or hats. Give the number out again, Claire. This is going to be brilliant. <laughs> this is, is going to be great. Really. Take oh, this one. Take this one. Seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. Just comedy observations. Yeah, stuff you thought with. of. Wacky stuff you thought of. <laughs> Just tell us what kind of stuff you come up with. Get the Sony people on the phone. This is dining. Uh, positivity. Absolutely. They could always do a good chorus, couldn't they? They, they could indeed. Um, I, I think we could play Pink. Is it just, is that really way out? You, you're saying that it's wrong? You can't yeah. play Pink. I like that new one. Yeah, but whether or not it's in the building. Up, so no, you not that one. The party oh, no, started. Do you know who that's written by? Do you know who that's I'm written by? I'm trying to call the nurse, but she's being a little bitch. This that is one. a little bit interesting. You know, um, on, let's get the party started. I'm coming up. Yeah. You know, that, you know who that's written by? Well, the way you say it sounds a bit like, um, is it. <laughs> <laughs> is it Radiohead? Tom York, you're thinking? No. No. <laughs> let's uh, get the party started. I'm coming, I'm coming up. up. I'm coming up. Is Careful, I'm coming up. Let's get a party started. I love it. One more case. Is it Johnny Rotten? Is Johnny Rotten? But this is the truth. It's written by that woman with the goggles and the big hat that used to be in Four Non Blondes. 
<laughs> is it? It's written by who? Oh, you're not looking. They're not thinking of snork, are you? No, no, no. Banana no. split. No, I oft, I oft got the two confused. Yeah. But, uh, no. So it goggle, it's goggle and the big hat. She had a big hat, didn't I she? Know, and a I pair know of goggles exactly and kind of sort of a sort of jippo look about her. What do you mean goggles? You can't say jippo. What do you mean goggles? <laughs> what's the what's <laughs> the correct word to say? Goggles. Gypsy. Jippo is yeah, it's a terrible derogatory term. It's like well, she looked like some kind of stranger, and she sort of had like matted dreadlocks and selling clothes bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, but lucky, lucky, lucky Heather, lucky Heather. Yeah, <laughs> she she had a big leather. Hat. Do you remember when you got stopped with Lucky Heather and you oh, didn't buy it? And then you had some bad luck. I had some bad luck about ten minutes later. Yeah, so I always stop and buy something. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> so I've got so shed loads of it at home. Because so I, I don't know when you got to throw it away. They don't tell you how long you've got to keep it for for six, the good luck. Six of January. <laughs> yeah, keeping it after that's bad luck. Yeah. I'm getting confused again, aren't I? Um, <laughs> um, no, what it was. Th I don't know which myth to believe in. Right, stop it. Let's go back go to. Uh, oh, I've got a party started. So going when? Yeah, I mean, uh, up. yeah. Uh, that is. As so I say, Flegel, she's Is the that her name? No, that's one of the banana splits. Now you've confused me. <laughs> Flegel's the one with the big teeth and right. the and the goggles. Right. Snork is the one with the, uh, basically. To be honest, I think it's an elephant. Okay. I think they've they've pretended they've made up an animal. There's so they've, many people listening who don't know who the banana splits are. The banana splits. The banana splits. <laughs> so, right. Listen, this, this, they know the banana splits are, and even people under 20 know the banana oh. Um, uh, Snork, Flegel, Drooper, who was the other one? If you can remember the name of that. Yeah, what's the number? Because I actually want to know this. This is what radio's for. When I can't think of something, they tell me. Yeah. So it's 08700 800 Drooper and Snork. I've no idea. I've God. No idea. Flegel, Drooper and Snork. Da da, da da, Drooper and Snork, Flegel. Bingo! Nice. Well done. Don't bother calling. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. That particular uh, tragedy or that has yeah. been avoided. Bingo. I yeah. don't know what the bingo looks passed. like. Yeah. There was one. Anyway. There, was a, there was one that had sewn up eyes. Drooper, I think. Sorry. Go on. No. Anyway. Um. W uh, my point was this. Go on. Um, Pink. Oh, I can't be bothered. No, really. I can't be bothered. I think Pink. we can play that new one by Pink. You can sort of play like, Pink. Why? Because it's too poppy. They just won't allow Pink on XFM. They what? They will not allow Pink on XFM. They what? They're Wait a minute. That's red rag to a ball. <laughs> I've always someone's, been a someone's telling you that you can't do something. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Right, let's also get the new Justin Timberlake single. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the I thing is, what? Ricky, you're going to have to nip down and have a word with Foxy because we haven't got it up here. Really? Yeah. I'd I mean, love he'll it. Have it can't but... you call someone at Capital Radio? Well, yeah. Can we call some? Now, what's that one by Busted? That's what I go to school for. What about Abs? It's dynamite. Abs. The new one from Abs. Dynamite. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, play a record and we'll discuss this pink thing. We do uh, want a bit of Cat. Oh, yeah. Cat Stevens. Yeah. Yeah. Cat's bullet four. This is sittings. Lovely. Piano and everything, isn't it? Oh, this was the tune we were originally going to use as the theme music for TV's The Office. That starts yeah. again on Monday, I think. It's <laughs> Just play it. <laughs> Cat Stevens and sitting. I couldn't find Pink, Rick, but I've got the S Club Juniors. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Pink is all right. Magic just because right? it, it hasn't got the credibility of like new punk and new metal. It's oh. a good tune. Uh -huh. It's all right. Don't, don't, we've never been snobby. We've never worried about credibility, have we? Hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> They're all down there. I'm going to get them. I'll tell you what, if you're going to do that, I'm just going to play adverts from now on. Can we play some adverts? <laughs> <laughs> Supergrass, Grace on XFM 104.9. I've been forgetting to say that. Yes. It's all gone to pot. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. um, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Little Carl's not here. Claire Sturgis is here. Absolutely. Hello. Yeah. Cracking. Yeah. Now, I think we can play Pink, you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't want to be responsible for it. No. I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem particularly with the lady. You know, she's made uh, a good effort. <laughs> with it, and I think, but apparently, it's it's either number one or it's gonna it's likely to be number one really? this, uh, this week. So, so um, it's not that rebellious. Me it's not particularly this, rebellious. No, but um, I don't know. I mean, what worries me is uh, that whether the audience will turn against you, and that you'll lose all musical credibility. <laughs> I that's that's the, the, no, I did that for a little. Really, I um, had a, an email just now, and I think maybe this answers why we didn't get very many calls about the uh, "Give Us a Crazy Band" name or an, an album title. Think about the number. They no, no, no. They think maybe they're all at the uh, the march, the big march. <laughs> Which I makes a lot of sense because I would I would imagine a lot of the sort of losers that listen to our show. What's the march? Probably about? also agree that uh, they should go and protest about a war. Oh, it's the oh, anti-war well, anti march. Yeah. march. Yeah. <laughs> it's the gangster war. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Well, I don't really know the ins and outs of this this whole thing, really. Uh, I mean, it sounds yeah. like it's a long way away. I, I, I suppose it's a like it did, yeah. They, they were asked if they wanted a war, and they said no. Is yeah. that so bad, Steve? Yeah. Do no, I, I mean, good luck to them. I, I don't think it's going to have much effect, to be honest. 
<laughs> you don't think? No, I don't really believe but, but in all she's that. I, I don't think he's worried in the light in the slightest. A couple no. of sort of dropouts and some sort of junkies are in the streets, you know. Well, you you, you say that you ladies. say that, but what what's their name? Some um, specials, Free Nelson Mandela. Eight years later, he was out. <laughs> That's true enough. So <laughs> That's absolute. I forgot I, about that. I think they were. And yeah. Well, and and, and uh, Live Aid sorted out world <laughs> hunger. Yeah, that, that, that put an end to that. So that was. Uh, but um, I see the difference there is Ebony and Ivory, no more racism <laughs> now. But musicians... That was done. Rick, you see musicians were involved there. Yeah. I don't think any musicians are involved this time. I think, well, I think David Albarn's there, they but... They've probably taken their, their bongos and their digital The tablers. You can see they're walking down now, loads of ponchos. Yeah. You were going to wear a poncho once, because you thought it'd make you more of a hit with the ladies, weren't you? Oh, but they're so now, ponchos. In Topshop, they are so now. So you'd have been ahead of your time. As ever, as ever. You see, I think if you wait a couple of years, those clogs are being. Exactly. This is what I'm hoping. You just... What about this pipe? I like to think they're going to... The pipe... The pipe is definitely on the way back at some point. The yeah, the pipe back. What do you think of a lady? Uh, uh, sorry, as a lady, what do you think of a man who smokes a pipe? I think it's lovely. Do you think it's quite yeah, sexy? Very sexy, yeah. I, think it's quite I wouldn't want to snog It takes though. your breath away. What? Because I've given up smoking, Steve. Yeah, it, ta it takes... Well, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be giving you a blowback. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that phrase is, Rick. I, I, I gambled with that phrase. <laughs> I don't know if a blowback... I don't that could be obscene. <laughs> I've got no idea what a no, blowback is. No, I think is. it is very, very sexy in a sort of a Val Dunican kind of way. He never smoked a pipe. Not Did right he not? Nothing. No, he smoked no. a goat. Oh, right. But he's talking about smoking a goat. But about Paddy McGinn's goat. Well, it blew you know, up. If you look at pictures of the great sort of thinkers of our time, in, you know, maybe at, their, at college or university in the sort of 1930s, mm. you've got those great, you know, the great thing of people who became the great artists of our century, and yeah. you see pictures of them in Oxbridge when they're in 19, they're all smoking pipes in tweed suits. Yeah. No young people now are smoking pipes. I fear that it's going to be dead in like 15 years. I don't think anyone's going to be smoking pipes. But I think, again, you I are feel like way maybe it's maybe a certain profile. Yeah. Maybe I've got to yeah. try and bring it back. Bring it back. I think you know, so. And then we could be seeing kids in Top Shop on a Saturday. And let's not forget sniffing Snuff. Some snuff. <laughs> I, I, my nan yeah. used to sit there with two brown stains just dribbling from her nose. Lovely. S s s yeah, oh. and that bit of snuff and some gin. Well, this oh. is it. Because I, I, my friend always said if he won um, millions of pounds, he'd spend it all trying to bring back as a fashion accessory the cape. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think See, the I cape. Because like you cane, can make such it? an entrance with the cape. And a cane. You? A cape and a cane, yeah, and a top hat. I wish people had to wear hats now. I'd See, I, 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 I can carry off because my shape and size. I look like Bertie Bassett. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> you'd look, you'd look like Basil Rathbone. I'd, well, or something. I'd look you'd, pretty good at all sort of you'd you'd Christopher good, Lee. Yeah. 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 Wow. You but I'd, I'd sweep into a room, you know, I know. Yeah, See, I think you look like... And don't, don't get this wrong. Don't take this wrong, right? <laughs> we're mates. I think you look like a freak with a cape on. <laughs> OK. So, all right, well... And at which point would you take it one step further and add the deer stalker? You know, and go the whole Sherlock Holmes so route, I, Yeah, I'd you? have the cape, the pipe, the deer stalker, yeah. and I'd solve crimes. <laughs> it would be great. It would look like... Uh, um, some sort you of could be my fat companion. <laughs> I could be. What, uh, sort of, like, get padding and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'd yeah. like to solve. I'd like to solve more crimes if I'm being truthful. I'd like to. I would love I, to know, solve I, crimes. Just to solve one crime would be oh, great. I wouldn't. I wouldn't matter if I solved it. If I, please came to me and said, you know, I went. I just look at the first block, go in. Yeah. Just get it off the streets. You know what I mean? Just like tick, done that. Sure. Yeah, but you I know. just feel there'd be something. I, th I feel like maybe I, because you know, like in in TV shows, it always used to be, you know, they were a, like they were a doctor who also solved crimes. They were a plumber. They solved crimes. Quincy, Quincy, Quincy you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a couple of sort of BAFTA winning writers. What did heart to heart do? Solve crimes. That's good. That'd be good. For that'd be great. What did heart to heart do? They were just millionaires. They were just though. a couple, a millionaire couple who would invariably sort, you know, uh, uh, what was but the they, murder they, she wrote? They did wrote? that she every week though. Was every she? week, heart to heart. Murder she wrote. Murder she wrote it and she solved it. She always solved it. It's brilliant. Murder she did wouldn't have been such a good sort of no, thing. No, no, no. 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 Um, but this is why you don't seem to get that anymore. You know, people who uh, do one job for a living, you know. DJ who also solves crimes. A Wasn't, a, well, the DJ who solved crimes, that was um, Shoestring. Was he a DJ? Yeah. He was. He was Eddie a private ear, was 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 wasn't he? He was a, a private ear on private the radio. Eye. Is that what that was that the thing yeah. they did? Not private eye, private ear. Is that what they yeah. said? Yeah. And how did he solve it? He worked out clues yeah. for call-ins and stuff. Yeah. No, he used to leave the building. <laughs> 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 but he didn't just sit there and play records and then try and guess. <laughs> That's so, great. <laughs> give us a call on the usual number <laughs> if you've got any idea uh, who murdered. Uh, uh, now it's snitch hour. Got yeah. a letter here. Who well, reckons I she knows? Used, I know a lot of my friends are uh, big fans of Midnight Caller. Do you remember oh, Midnight Caller? Yeah, was yeah. he a DJ he just, who uh, solved crimes? Yeah, it was one of those late night things in America, wasn't it? But did, was he a DJ? He solved crimes, didn't he? I don't know if he'd solve crimes or just solve... If you've ever solved a crime, email us. puzzles. <laughs> he, had, he had one of those puzzler books. Weren't you on the front cover of Puzzler once? One of those things you get. Weren't mm. you? Puzzler. Were you? Was I? 
No, no, I don't think so. Oh, it was your other friend, friend who was a DJ, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, a, yeah, it was, yeah. Puzzler magazine. That's it, yeah. So was, was Puzzler a rude thing? No, no, it's one of those things that you those do. Those puzzle books you can you, buy. You, oh, you, actually, you, it's a puzzle. You do oh, for coach journeys. And they just put they just people's pick. pictures on without permission. Yeah. I know people are just like, well, I don't get permission. They just, they just find, like, um, like celebrities and they just get their picture and they stick them on the well, front. Well, they would have yeah. used me then, would they? Well, I, I forgot. I didn't, I didn't. Hey, pink. Should we play pink? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't live by the rules. Be on your head. Here we go. That was the strokes and <laughs> kids are kids are mental. Yeah. That was no, you're all right. No, shut up. No, the thing is, I, I think if we'd introduced that as just, and we didn't mention who it was, and we just said this is the new one from one of those trendy new bands, you know, the Boomtown Rats. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ah, I'm sure they, these oh. listeners would have happily accepted it. Yeah. As it was, they knew it was pink, and the, the phone lines have gone crazy. We had upwards of two oh. calls. <laughs> <laughs> we had, I'll tell you this, we had between two and four calls. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, ah. and they've not, they've not enjoyed it. Why do we do this show? We don't need to do this show. Because you love us. We could be on Radio 1. Oh, man, I We it. could be on Radio 2, probably. Yeah. I don't know. Virgin, uh, uh, I think, called once. Yeah. Um... Someone just emailed, they just said, uh, Pink Sounds Like Run For The Sun by Bucks Fizz. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what they're thinking. I can see what they're thinking. Uh, what do they want then? Well, yes. Okay, cool. what's the phone oh, number again? Be, you, know, you know what people are like? They, I, never, do you ever, I never understand who phones are ready. Who tries, it took us like two hours to fail to get through to Chris Moyles. People will phone radio stations, can you please play the new one by The Strokes? You just buy it, or you'll have the album. Why have you got to hear it on the radio? What difference does that make? Some guy talks at the end and the, and the beginning of it. Yeah. Partially ruins the song. I, I can't understand who phones up for requests. We're really alienating our listeners yeah. now, aren't we? Nice We're going, one. we don't care what you think, go and buy it. We're yeah. going to play what we want and we don't care. Yeah. I mean, we're not being particularly funny or interesting. Oh. We haven't even got that to fall back on. I'll tell you what it is, Rick, arrogance. <laughs> Laziness. When you've got a when you've got a, a hit TV show on your hand and you've won the awards and you're doing and you're make, you're making the kind of money that you are at those massive corporate gigs. Yeah. Where they're paying yeah. you thousands of pounds to turn up for ten minutes. You, you don't need this. You, I mean, Steve, and, uh, Steve, don't don't you get that then? I'm afraid I don't. Claire. No, I'm no, I don't, no, we we no, we, no. Uh, we, oh, we carved are. it up early on that. Um, Steve would not be making the sort of money that I would. <laughs> yes. And uh, he shook on that. That was, that was written contractually. <laughs> yeah, <in> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think. Oh, uh, so you did shake on that. Oh, yeah. Yes. It oh, would be, yes. and it would be horrible to go back. I don't think he realised quite the difference. Yeah. Um, but this you know, huge success. I don't think yeah. he'd want me to Welsh on it. Right. I don't think he'd be happy with himself if yeah. I gave him any. I couldn't live with myself if you <laughs> gave me some of that cash. <laughs> well, what should we play then? What should we play some states? Should we, we play just the strokes or something? Playing the strokes. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. Then. That's that's oh. oh, thank God for that. <laughs> oh, Electric soft braid. Same way every day. Is that what you want? Is that what you want? Do you mean St me or the listener? The listener. Sure. Is it what? So they didn't like. So they want good music. They see. <laughs> Apparently, Rick. They, so, what, they would prefer. Uh, good music to They pink. want good music, do they? Are you sure they want good music? They, they, they appear to want good music, Rick. Why, right. on, wait a minute, what are you thinking? I'm going to think of playing a really good record next. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 no. no. They, they've woke me up now. They Come want on. good music. They don't like, right, so I will do a little deal with them. Okay. <laughs> I will play them a fantastic piece of music. As long as they promise to turn the stereo up to number 10. <gasps> wee, wee, yeah, wee, 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 yeah, wee, wee. What about yeah. the neighbours, Rick? Think about the neighbours. What? You think they'll annoy the neighbours? They may annoy Steve, the maybe I want them to annoy the neighbours. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what? Rick? What? You know what that was? What? It's the sound of the rule book being torn up. Yes! Yeah. Rick? Yeah. Yeah, you think I'm playing with fire? It sounds like it. Maybe I like getting burned. <laughs> oh, <laughs> careful, Rick, careful. Because you could scold your hands, but what about your elbows? I wish I knew what that meant. I wish I knew what that meant. I didn't really think right. that through. This is a great piece of music by one of the greatest bands ever. Okay, it's one of their best songs. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay, it is long. It's a long tune. What, you know, what, what? What, you can't handle it? What, that? you can't, you don't want eight minutes Ooh, of you the you eight minutes of cracking music. Yeah, listen to this. Please switch uh, off your radio. No, seriously, turn the radio up. Turn, turn it, crank it Turn it up. crank it up. Go. Rock it up. That makes up for pink, doesn't oh, it? Oh, man alive. Oh, that's it's an amazing me track. Out. It's incredible. And, uh, it is, I mean, incredible. It's textbook track. rock and roll. But that, uh, when I was growing up, I had two favourite lyrics all the time, and uh, one of them's in there. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah, it sends a shiver in his It's fantastic. And the other one was, um, it's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Nice. You know that is? Nice. Ooh. Got a phone in. This would be a competition. What should we give away? Um, office. 
<laughs> we haven't got any, have we? Just why don't you just sign that's your like signature on a piece of paper or something? That's got to be worth something in a couple of years. Four quid. Yeah. <laughs> Four pounds you get on it eBay. It would cheapen the piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. It's not if it's a rubbish bit of paper. I've had an which, email Which here. I probably would sign. There's an e email here from uh, Davey Look, Monroe. it's lit up. No, wait a minute. Look at that. Oh, my God. They've gone mad. They uh, Answer it. Put them live. Oh. They might know the answer. Hang on. We'll give them, we'll give them something. We'll give them some CD. How do you, how do you oh, put it Why do you figure that out? Let me just read this email. Go on. If you're having to play, it says here, if you're having to play extra ad breaks and eight minute long songs, it just goes to show who provides all the material for that radio show of yours. Uh, did Carl secretly write The Office as well? <laughs> and I think to myself, <laughs> it's like, what, what do you oh, want don't. from us? Just just see if it's someone someone on one of the most incredible rock and roll tunes ever laid down on vinyl, and you're whinging. I know. Because you'd rather have our inane banter. What kind of a person are no, you? No, they'd rather have Carl's inane Not banter. Clearly. Don't, don't big your I roll just, up. They don't want us at all, Steve. I've just had a phone call from a very nice girl saying, where's Carl? I said, well, you know, he's back next week. Well, what's wrong with me? She went, no, you're lovely, Claire. but Carl calms the other two down. Sure, really. Sure. Can, can we can just see if someone's on the phone? Yeah, Is anyone on, there? Go right, what are we going to give them? We're going to give them we some CDs. We've got we're running on we'll it. take the name. Right, right. Anyone there? Hello? Hello? Oh, God, there's someone there. Oh, I've got to put my headphones on. Oh, hang on. Oh, uh, what, was the, uh, what was the lyric again? Stay there, please. All right. It's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Life on Mars, David Life Bowie. on Mars, David oh. Bowie. It's easy as that. Oh. What's your name? It's John Ball. John Ball. John, I'll be honest with you, we got nothing. We got nothing to give uh, you. It's not good enough. No, yeah. we'll get him some. We'll give him, yeah, we'll give him an office CD. He doesn't, and we some... can't keep doing that, Rick. It's We've got nothing yes, else. They don't, give, they don't give us anything, do they? They don't, they are, oh. <laughs> it's a wonder we get into the building. No I one's know, around on Saturdays. No one cares. Office I DVD. Yeah, what, okay. what would you really like, though, if you could have anything? Yeah, Office DVD. See? There you fair go. Enough, enough. Brilliant. Okay. Stay on the line, mate, and I'll get you details. Okay. Excellent. That was a competition. We did. That was like real radio. Well done. It was like real radio. <laughs> now we've got to play David Bowie, haven't we? That's what they oh, do. No, you Foxy. Are, I can see what you no, mean. No, but Foxy would have it well, you're lined gonna, up. You're going to have a heart attack. Am I? Live on air. It'll be <laughs> yeah. the dramatic radio, and that's Sony Award winning. I know that. <laughs> Any kind of I think you remember when Tony Blackburn had his breakdown on there. I think, did he win awards for that? I mean, it was pretty impressive Probably. stuff. It was pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, what, what, breakdown yeah, award? Have a breakdown, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the, the, uh, this year's best breakdown on the <laughs> Tony totally Blackburn. Yeah, but, um... Or Tessa, Tessa, marry me. Yeah, it was something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Did he play the same song again and again and again? Must did have been fascinating radio. Uh, that <laughs> sounds like Capital Now. <laughs> Oh, uh, high five. Yeah, nice We've done there. Oh, well done. Well, well done. Are we owned by Capital? You've, you've we got, are, yeah. <laughs> yeah Remember what happened last time? Sure. And now Richard Park, who owned Capital, is, is the Grand Master. What? The Grand Master. He's, he's <laughs> grandfather. No. He's a headmaster, um, headmaster of um, Fame Academy. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, let's play a record now, because you, you you have to lie down. Because you're, <laughs> you're just getting so worked up now. I can tell when there's an excitement and enthusiasm and sweat, beads of sweat run down well, your brain. it started off so badly, we had nothing, but then I did a competition, gave away some things. You've got an email that really annoyed you, haven't you? Well, we can talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, whenever I see beads of sweat, I know, because that's not Jeez. the look of face I know. <laughs> okay. It worries me. You never work yourself up into any kind of sweat. Okay, so let's, let's just play it. Let's, um, we're going so well now, aren't we? What about a bit of Beck? Would that a lovely bit of Beck, just yeah. to everything out, just yeah. calm everything yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah. All right. relax. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you got, there you are, yeah. you see, he's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Beck, beautiful that. Good tune. Brilliant. Good tune. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Lost Cause, XFM 104.9. It's going well, isn't it? Oh, I'm loving it. All right, let's do some else then. Adverts. Yeah. Adverts, I'd love to hear some adverts. Yeah. Oh, please. There it is. Life on Mars, with that great lyric by David Bowie. Indeed. Yeah. Although, it's not quite as good as, uh, what was the one, was it Jeff Lynne? The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million, million to, to one. one, and yet they come. Yeah, and still they <laughs> come. And still they come. And I wonder what you'd come. get. Would you get that on Lab Brooks? I'd like to A million see, yeah. to one. But it's, it's yeah. a million to one, and still they come. Claire. Yeah, and yeah. Still they come. they like, didn't yeah, know the odds. <laughs> I go, what are you doing? It's a million to one. It's, it's what? Some guy There's like, a million to one on you. We should have put that on. We didn't, <laughs> you didn't tell me you were coming. We could have split it 50-50. I could have made it a little bit. I could have gone, wow. I could have probably got them up to a million and a half. Now you're here. We're never going to get good dogs. Oh, Gorg, the chances of Gorgie. that. The chances of that happening were a million What have you come for? They've probably come for that. <laughs> well, why quash. did you sneak in? They've come for that quash drink, haven't they, again? You could have snuck oh, down. Oh, what are you, you could doing? have snow and flown back uh, and then made another you know, you know that fella? We come for that drink you call quash. I bet he'd get off with snork. <laughs> wouldn't no, he? He'd are you thinking fits. of weird stuff again? <laughs> you're, you're thinking of crazy <laughs> ideas again. <laughs> what about those, uh, uh, those smash aliens? Or, you've got something on them, have you? The yeah. Little, you know, uh, they aliens. went out, right, without an umbrella. <laughs> oh, poor <laughs> down. It they rained. Got... I knew it would. <laughs> yeah. I knew it would. <laughs> anyway. Oh, well, anyway, David Bowie. Now, look, this is spiralling. Can I just mention Lynn, who's just phoned, because she was queuing up all night outside the Apollo for Bowie tickets, and she got a pair, so oh, she's well, dead well, happy. Can you dedicate that to
Uh, David no. came in, did he? Was this recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to mention her name. She works in the office, Charlotte. Uh, when he walked by her desk, which you have to do when you come to the studio, she didn't actually meet him, shake his hands or, or make eye contact, but she actually cried because he was in her vicinity. Really? And she, wow. she actually burst into tears when he walked by. Isn't Rick, that, I've made that. women do that. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know... You've got something in common. Well, a little something in common with David Bowie. But they, yeah, but they, they, <laughs> I, I, they whimper and weep when you're in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's sort of like... There's a lot more screeching as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of screaming. Tell them about that emo you just what got. But, right, I got to tell the... the, uh, the I, was, I nearly said the fans! <laughs> People who happen to be listening to XFM waiting for the yeah. person after us. Who's on next? Natasha's Natasha. Natasha. With the football yeah. show. Right, the right. Um... Uh, Steve was genuinely annoyed. I laughed, right? <laughs> Steve is genuinely annoyed. He doesn't like he doesn't like rudeness or people insulting him from I, a distance. Okay, I'm not sure I can find it. Oh, what was it? Oh, you got to find it. Well, hang on, let me. Uh, oh, hang, hang on. on. This is good radio as well. The sound of a, a mouse clicking in the distance. Well, I'll just keep talking. I'll just keep talking. Can't what you was, can come up with what some was, magic? What was Scooby Doo all on about? A talking dog is a bit weird, isn't it? No, I want to. Um, and then, right, what was that? Lucky Races. Uh, I don't know if... I don't know, wait a minute, no, wait a minute. So why did they run the cavemen if they... Uh, the car? I've got it, I've got, got it. Right, OK. Um, <laughs> this is an email. This is an email that was sent through. Right. Uh, and I, I, th this is my feeling. I think if you're going to email an insult, <laughs> you've got to at least be clear what the insult is. <laughs> You can't, you can't make me do the work. You can't make me try and guess or figure no. out. No. It's like sending someone hate mail and they have to pay postage. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. go, well, if you're gonna... S what yeah. you exactly. Or making, yeah, an obscene phone call, but collect. Yeah, uh, collect the, yeah, yeah the, uh, the postman just asked you 25 people before he hands exactly. you a letter yeah, bomb. Yeah. Go on. It says, uh, Mechant. <laughs> Mechant! <laughs> it opens with Mechant. <laughs> Who are you, call sad, exclamation mark. <gasps> At least my mother still don't cut my hair. Merchant, who are you call sad? At least my mother still don't cut my hair. Is it an anagram? I don't know. I, I feel like it's been translated from the <laughs> French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a Japanese spelling. Yeah, exactly. Hates you. Exactly. And he's he's got, machine, a, yeah. he's got a Japanese English dictionary. It's just it's just literal. Yeah. So um, how does he know your mum cuts your hair then? Have you said you've never said that on there, have you? <laughs> It's not true, Jimmy. <laughs> can I just say, uh, I think your hair looks really nice. Thank you. Thank you I've known you for about <laughs> no, five no, years now. No, it's it, lovely. I laugh. I laughed at you needing someone to say it. It looks fine. Yeah, it looks good. What do you mean it looks fine? <laughs> it does look good. It looks good. It's got a little bit of product on it, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. A little bit of hair gel. Maybe, uh, maybe Gavin had his fingers all over it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I have my hair cut by Gavin of uh, West Hampstead. Is it he called, does a good is job. that, is what it's called, Gavin, or is he a bloke who works in... It is a Gavin who works in a barbershop. Do you use shop. that fudge right. stuff on Sorry, is that, no, no, but seriously. I use a form of clay, a moulding <laughs> clay. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mad. Gavin, Gavin it's recommended mad. it. Yeah. Gavin recommended it, and I've been very happy so far. <laughs> Hold on, though. Rick, what do you use? Uh, I don't. Yeah. yeah. Don't, I just sort of... Well, that's obvious. <laughs> no, I just sort of, like, comb it back, and whatever way it falls, really. Yeah. Um, but, um... You had more questions about Gavin? Yeah, no. I was up seeing Gavin yesterday, um, just having a haircut. There's no nothing untoward, <laughs> and um, and I was and I went. I thought I popped past Habitat. There's a Habitat, and it's quite a trendy kind of um, uh, designer furniture shop. Or whatever. Sure. And I uh, popped in there. I thought I'll pick up the uh, the sort of brochure, the the catalogue. There was a big stack of the new. You catalog. were stunned by the prices. You're going to tell me, aren't you? No, I'll tell you what, I was about to walk out with the, the guy went, hey, where are you, hey, where are you going with the hair? It's a great looking haircut, but where are you going with that catalogue? I went, what do you mean? He went, it's two quid. You've got to pay two pounds for a catalogue from Habitat, and I was, and I said, well, I could go down to Argos. I can get as many as I want for free. I can go crazy in Argos. I can get them Littlewoods, the, the mail order people. Yeah. They'll send it to my home. Yeah. I got to pay two. There's lingerie in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've just got like some furniture and stuff. <laughs> And I'm paying two quid for me. If there were some ladies draped over the kind of filing cabinets, <laughs> I'd be interested. I'd I pay two quid. I love the fact that you... Then what did you say, though? You didn't say I can go down to Argus and get as many as I like. What I did, did you say? Yeah, I did. I did. I said, I said, well, what are you talking about? This is... I, what, what, and why am I paying two quid? That is weird charging for a catalogue. But this is a catalogue just, said... just to tell me what I might want to buy. It's sort of their calling card. It's like paying for a poster or a sticker. Exactly. This is what, it's, just like, it's almost like paying an entrance fee to go into the shop. Yeah. That's it, a good idea. It's a good idea. It's a good... I mean, because it's good to just walk around and browse. So, <laughs> I mean, I'd pay a quid to like, walk around a really yeah. good shop. Yeah, but I'll tell you this, the, uh, yeah, if Habitat maybe had some kind of, like, sort of centrefold... Why don't you do I'd this? I'd be interested. I'll tell you what, in a great shop like Habitat, you pay a pound, right? 
if you buy anything, that comes off the thing. If you don't buy anything, you've, you've paid a you pound, stop quid. wasting their time. It's an incentive to buy. I wouldn't like it. Sure. I wouldn't go in there. I think it's a terrible idea. <laughs> well, well, anyway, uh, that's, that's, that's What should we play? That was a sideways look at the, wor the world <laughs> yeah. of high street shops. <laughs> I think uh, you should play the award-winning Ms. Dynamite. Yeah, oh, yeah go she's on. cracking. Yeah. Ms. Dynamite. Good, that, isn't it? It's cracking. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Mercury award-winning. Absolutely. Well done. Yeah, good luck to her. Good luck to her. I must admit, I went in the streets, but I yeah. she's, she's a very good second choice, and, mm. uh, you know, wish you all the luck in the all world. All the luck in so the world. You're, I'm looking at your hair. It's not right? bad, is it? And you've, 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 you've bigged it up, so you're quite... So we, I, I assume you didn't go to a bar, go, barber. You've got... This, this, this is a hairdresser's. This is right. Gavin of West Hampton. I'm going to ask you now, yeah. right? And I'm not going to take the mickey, even if it's a hundred pounds, I'd think you're a fool, and I know you wouldn't pay that much, but it's obviously more than a fiver then, isn't yes. it? Yes. How much do you pay? Ricky Gervais, for this haircut, I paid the princely sum, and I was proud of it, 22 notes. Mm. But, That's all right. but I went up to 24, because I was pleased with what I had. <laughs> Little tip for him. Two quid tip. Two quid tip. I could have just given him one of those Habitat catalogues. <laughs> <laughs> he'd have been pleased with that. I love Just slap that on the desk. Yeah, and he'd have gone, thanks very much. Oh, so you'd yeah. have to go, I'm going to be honest, Gavin, <laughs> that is not free. <laughs> exactly. If that had been an Argus catalogue, then throw me out of it, it'd be an <laughs> yeah, insult. Exactly. Look at the price. I'll get two quid. Go, yeah. yeah. That two quid is yours. That's <laughs> yours. You're would taking you, that home. Would you prefer the money? <laughs> what should we do? Yeah. I got, oh, um... We've got, we usually play a, a new one around this time. Um, what new adverts have we got? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty here. Oh, come on, let's come on. Are you in? Any? <laughs> no. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. I imagine that's starting a British film. Do you yes. know what I mean? They're jumping on a London bus and they're going around London. Well, of course, uh, the film about a boy, he did the soundtrack for. So if you were a little bit more up on films and stuff, you'd have already yeah. known that that <laughs> idea's been done and you wouldn't have embarrassed yourself and there wouldn't be egg on all our faces. Oh, but no. But thanks very much. Sorry Rick. about that, I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very messy, aren't yeah, I? Yeah. What have you got, Steve? What have you got for Rick, me? Rick, I'm glad you've asked. Thanks for asking. Um, this is a Stevie Wonder track. Now, mm. I hope people aren't as offended by Stevie as they were by Pink. I'm sure they won't I be. I mean, for goodness sake, he's one of uh, 20th century's greatest artists. Yeah. Um, this is from an album, not one of his more famous, Fulfilling This's First Finale. Yeah. And this is a track um, called You Haven't Done Nothing. But Rick, here's a little quiz for you, a little pop quiz for you. Oh. There is a very famous... Um, backing vocal group here. I mean, they were famous in their own right, but here they're doing backing vocals. I'd like you to identify them. And there's a, there's an Office DVD winging its way to you, Ricky, <laughs> if you can spot who it is. Right, Let's okay, it. the pressure's on. <laughs> oh, magnificent. Do you not Brilliant. enjoy that? Excellent. Yeah, Fantastic. Stevie Wonder, you haven't done nothing from uh, fulfilling this as first finale. It's quite tricky, that, the backing vocals. Well, they're I not particularly prominent, well, are it they? Can't, and it could be anyone. That's why I just go for someone that's a vocal group with, I don't know, uh, is it obvious or is it's it? It's very obvious. What that it would be that they would back him. Uh, it's not obvious that they would back him, but it's uh, obvious that uh, who, I mean they are huge stars. Well, they were huge stars. And what is was it? Was those spats, what mid seventies, early seventies? Talking mid seventies. Nineteen seventy four is the album. There's an it's office not, DVD. Uh, it's not the you. Jackson Five. It's like the that. Jackson Five. Is it really? Oh! There they are. Well done. Well, there, there you go. You are, yeah. Well I mean done. that's how big Stevie was that he could ask the Jackson Five just to stroll in. There you go. With some fairly See? nondescript backing vocals. First, first uh, album I ever got, Jackson Five. Was it? Which yeah. one? It was the one with Rockin' Robin on it. Nice. <laughs> did you rock to that? I imagine you I did. I walked around right to that. How old were you? What, what were you talking? Eighteen. Uh, <laughs> I was about, uh, I suppose, I don't know, eleven or twelve, and I had one of those little um, cassette players, the one you had to press down, play, and what's it? And it had a little handle that came out. They're brilliant, yeah. And I had one CD with it. Well, one tape. One tape, yeah. Sure. And, uh, yeah. and you bought it yourself, did you? Or no, did no, you? that was Christmas present. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. And that was the, what, the only one you had for, like, I uh, imagine, like a year or something. Just well, that one tape. Yeah. Like, what yeah. was your first uh, record purchase? It was uh, a Disco Fever compilation. Well, actually called Disco Fever, and I got it because I, I loved Yes Wait, Sir, I Can What, are you embarrassed about having your mobile on, or what? Oh, Something's oh, vibrating, and I'm sorry. assuming it's a mobile. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so it's my boyfriend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I did turn the ringer off. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what, it's a disco fever compilation? Yeah, yeah, featuring Baccarat, Yes Sir, I Can Boogie. Cracking. Yeah. And, um, Space Float On, I think, which is what I want, what I want. Float On, that Yeah, one. that's one, yeah. That's Who, the floaters, isn't it? The floaters, yeah. yeah. Hi, Always hi, made me laugh. Larry, yeah. my name's, yeah. I don't know. Magic Fly by Space. All right. Do you remember well, that no, one? No, I don't. No, yeah. no. Okay. I don't know if my first purchase is cool or not, really, because I suppose it, it seems like it was. It was the uh, greatest hits of the Stranglers. That is so oh, cool. Are the Stranglers quite cool? That's yeah. scary, because, uh, I th yeah, I 
finished school by the mm. time that that came out. I think mm. that's scary. The Great Sister Stranglers. No, I, I was well, never. I think that's Stranglers more to do with fan. the fact that my parents didn't have any records in the house. They had, I think, they had the Jeff Love Orchestra plays big war theme tunes. <laughs> 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 they had, they had one of those Top of the Pops albums with a woman wearing a neckerchief on the cover. Yeah, and um, and that was pretty much it. That, they, and the eighteen twelve overture, you know, played I had on one the fiddle or something. I had one of those with Mozart Mozart's fortieth on it because right. that was that was released at the time. Oh, that wasn't obviously Mozart's 40th birthday. <laughs> no, no. That would have been a wild swing. If he'd old. made it that far, that'd yeah, be a wild that would great, I'd love to hear that on the on record. How old was he when he died? He was quite young, wasn't he? I didn't live long enough. 18 years, I think. He was a genius. No. He was a boy wonder. Yeah, he's one hundred. But what people don't realize is like Ali Jones. It was all over by the time he was eleven. What a lot of people don't realize about Mozart was that he also, in his spare time, used to solve crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was why he was so. That was what, musical crimes. He was like, oh, plagiarism we've come full issues. Circle, we have we? indeed. We've yeah, brought yeah. that right back. We should. Yeah, I right. hate to interrupt you, boys, Go but on, we, we have got to uh, squeeze one more song we've in. Before okay. we, well, yeah, well uh, what should we do? Bit of what should we have? What have we got there, Claire? Well, I've, I've, this got, this I've got this, this one I want to play you. I want what to play you want to play? By the Electric Six. It better be good, because if you end a show with it... I mean, we've had lots of faux pas this and really bad This is going bits. to be possibly the biggest song of 2003, you think so? Rick. Go on then. Man yeah. Alive. Right, well, this is it. Thanks very much indeed, Claire, for Cheers, thank you. Thank you. No, it's, it's a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Uh, yeah. really is Carl back next week? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, just Lee doesn't care, does he? Uh, yeah. Can we just quickly say, so you're on Parkinson tonight then, Ricky? Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the office starts, what is it, Monday? This is easy, this, isn't it? And there's a DVD winging his way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess, I do want one. <laughs> <laughs>